What's going on guys, it's your boy Scrubby here, back again with another video, and welcome to the 12 days of Scrubs. That's right, the annual Christmas tradition where uh, I compile all the videos from the year into a super long form for you guys to enjoy. This is the third annual one, so if you're looking forward to it, please be sure to press the like button, comment down below, subscribe if you're new, or you'll get coal for Christmas. And if you really want to be a swag lord, check out the Karen Christmas sweater in the description. And without further ado, let's get in to the first episode of the 12 Days of Scrubs. Alright, so the person who sent this in to me when they were younger lived in a neighborhood that had like a ton of kids that were around the same age. And it was a ton of fun because they could literally play like 11 on 11 touch football and just have themselves a great time. But there was one kid that we're gonna name Eric for the purpose of this story time who was super annoying to try to play with because he would just constantly cheat. And listen, when you're playing like 11 on 11 football, just don't cheat because, I don't know, you're gonna ruin the game for quite a few people, and on top of it, even if you're not like the best player of all time, you got 10 teammates that are gonna be able to help you out a little bit. But he would just do things, like people would touch him, he would just deny it, and then start a huge argument, postpone the game, be all dramatic, quit, take a bunch of people with him. Or like, you know, he would say people stepped out of bounds, or da 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 da, that type of stuff. Just really annoying things. And he kept doing it one day, and even his own team was getting annoyed with him. They're like, bro, quit stopping the game to whine. It's seriously being more annoying than it is helpful, like, can we actually play? All the stuff you're complaining about either isn't against the rules, not a big deal, or didn't happen, so just please stop. And for whatever reason on this day, Eric was like, no, I am going to ruin the game for everyone. And he just kept complaining, kept cheating, kept whining. And so eventually everybody in the game was like, you're not allowed to play anymore. We will go find someone else. They went and knocked on someone else's door, brought him out. And they were like, Eric, you can't play anymore. Which, listen, some people are going to think is mean, but it's not like they didn't tell him to knock it off over and over. And if somebody's just not following the rules of the game, like, okay, they're just not fun to play with. Especially when you give them multiple chances to just get it together. Like, hey man, please stop or we're going to kick you out. They keep doing it. At that point, you kick them out, you're pretty justified. He was pretty pissed though and started arguing with them saying that they couldn't do that because, you know, he had the ability to play wherever he wanted to play and they were like, yeah, but we don't want to play with you, so I don't know, man. You can sit there and watch, but like, we're not going to give you the ball. Everyone's going to pretend you don't exist. And so he stands there for a little bit and everyone just keeps playing and pretending he doesn't exist and he's yelling at them, like screaming things and everyone's just ignoring him and so he decides to go into his garage. And everyone thinks at that point that Eric's just like gone bye-bye he's gonna go inside he's pissed off or whatever but nope his pettiness level is a little bit more than that and so he comes back out to like the end of his driveway which is in the middle of the game that they're playing with his bike and starts working on it with some wrenches and when I said working on it I threw up the air quotes not that you could see it because uh, he was just kind of like taking wrenches that didn't even fit on his bike and just kind of like smacking the bike and complaining super loudly about how everyone that was playing sucked and how they shouldn't have kicked him out, da 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 da. And they're literally watching him, like, I, I, for example, like imagine taking a, uh, a socket wrench that's just way too small for anything on the bike and smacking the tire and being like, I'm out here working on my bike while all those losers over there that suck are just doing nothing. It was just more entertaining than anything, but of course after a while it got annoying, so a few people playing the game were like, dude, can you please stop? And he was like, no, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to sit here and work on my bike and there's nothing that you can do about it. And so they realized that there really was nothing that they could do about it. So they just went back to playing the game. And now he was pissed off that they were just ignoring him even when he was complaining. They weren't asking him to stop or doing anything about it. So he decided that the best course of action would be to take his little protest to the middle of the street so he goes out into the middle of the game and starts working on his bike so he would be like in the middle of the game. But instead of like getting mad or arguing with him or stopping the game, they just moved it down like 40 feet so that way he was at the back of the end zone now. So they're just really avoiding him. And he keeps trying to find ways to ruin the game and be annoying. I don't think he realized that it was just making them more sure of their decision to not play the game with him in the first place. 
but they keep playing and now he's playing in the middle of the street with his bike at the end and still complaining and whatnot and they're just ignoring him but because they're playing in the street eventually a car comes it's not like it's one of these neighborhoods where cars are banned I don't know if those actually exist could you imagine like everyone has to park their car at the parking lot in the front of the neighborhood and then walk home okay we don't allow any cars close there's a car coming, and when you're a little kid playing in the street, I feel like this is pretty universal. I've never, like, talked about a memory about this and seen someone look at me like they don't know what I'm talking about. Someone usually yells out, car, everyone turns, looks to see where it's coming from, and then you move out of the road. So, 22 kids that are playing this game move out of the road. But sure enough, he's just sitting there, like, pretending to work on his bike still and ignoring it for some reason. And I'm not sure why he was doing that. I don't know if he thought it was going to get the kids playing football in trouble. I don't know if he just felt like being annoying. I don't know if he was so mad he was going to take it out on cars now or what. But he literally just stays in the middle of the street, sitting there with his bike pretending to work on it. And so the car gets probably like three feet away and stops, obviously. It's not a GTA server where it just slammed on the gas or anything. And uh, it's sitting there for probably about 10, 15 seconds. And they hear the window rolling down and like a guy, probably mid-age, I don't know, like 35, 40 years old, sticks his head out of the window and says, hey, can you move out of the road? Like, I gotta get by. Are, are you, can you see me? Like, can you move out of the road? And the kid just ignores him. Eric pretends that he doesn't exist. He's like, meh, I don't know. I don't really hear anything. I'm just gonna pretend that nothing's happening. Which, listen, if I was the guy in the car, that would probably bug the crap out of me. Like, I'm trying to nicely tell you to move out of the road because you're just working on your bike in the middle of the road and you're gonna pretend I don't exist as if somehow I'm in the wrong for this. Imagine if uh, I came up and just parked my car in the middle of your football game. That'd probably be annoying. So, whatever. He's ignoring him, and so the guy leans back in and just decides to honk his horn. And I don't think that he was doing it maliciously to, like, try to scare the crap out of him. I think he was just trying to go, er, get out of my way. He had tried to tell him to move. The kid is in the middle of the road. Honestly, most people probably would have started with the honk. I feel like most people wouldn't even have taken the time to lean out the window. At least in my neighborhood, bro. Like, there would be people that would honk even if we got out of the way just because, I don't know, whatever, they were just pissed. But when he honks the horn, Eric, for some reason, decides that the only appropriate response to take to being honked at when you are in the middle of the road blocking the intersection is to turn, and you know how he was working on it with like that little socket wrench that was too small for the bike and kind of smacking the rubber tire? Well, he turns, and almost like that scene in Dodgeball, takes the wrench and just throws it at the car. And Eric didn't have a lot of athletic ability. I would say he had the athletic ability of a small slug. That being said, when you're throwing a wrench at a car, you'd have to be really, really, really bad at everything to be able to miss that from like five feet away. So, of course, everybody lets out a gasp as this wrench is just kind of like spinning over itself towards the car and it smacks right into the windshield. And they weren't incredibly old or anything, but like when you throw a wrench as hard as you can at a windshield, obviously the windshield is going to do the windshield thing and it cracks the windshield and it gives out this big just like the, the I don't know what it is, not spider webbing across, but like a couple cracks kind of shoot out from it. Didn't go all the way across, but it spider webs out a little bit. And everybody is just like, oh, crap. He just broke that car's windshield. What do we do? No one's ever seen anything like this before. This isn't commonplace. Believe it or not, usually when they're out here playing football and a car comes, everyone gets out of the road, the car drives by, they go back to their game, and that's it. There's no other events that need to happen. There's no other events that should happen. That should be the end of it. So this windshield is cracked. Everyone is in shock, and Eric, at that point, leaves his bike in the road, but just turns and sprints inside. Probably realizing that he was about to be in a metric butt ton of trouble, like had to have been just freaking out at that point. I don't know what you expect though. I mean, obviously you're afraid of getting in trouble, but at the same time, what do you think is going to happen when you throw a wrench at glass? Did you just think it was going to bounce off and he was going to be like, hey man, that's not cool. I don't appreciate you throwing wrenches at my car. So he runs inside. The guy who's driving the car throws his car in park and runs out and starts banging on the door. 
obviously wanting to talk to a parent or something. I mean, at this point, there's a couple hundred dollars of damage done to his car. And on top of it, uh, why is your kid acting like this? Did you teach your kid to just park his bike in the middle of the road and when someone tells him to move, just ignore the existence and then throw a wrench? What did you teach him to do? I think there's a lot of things that probably let you know if you're doing a bad job as a parent, but this has got to be one of those ones that's like, oh, I'm doing a really bad job. When your kid is just being a nuisance to strangers and just damaging their things, causing hundreds of dollars in damage. Especially because if a kid's gonna run around causing a ton of damage, it's awful for the people that you're causing the damage for. You just shouldn't do it. But on top of it, you're massively burdening your family because who do you think is on the hook for all this crap that you break, man? It's probably not the person that's not legally able to have a job. No, mom and dad are gonna have to pick up an extra shift to pay for the stuff you broke like an absolute idiot. Anyways, the guy's banging on the door for a while and he's not really screaming a lot, but all 22 of the people playing football are sitting watching this waiting for this to go off. And finally, his dad answers... And instead of being like, what's going on, what's happening, anything like that, he starts yelling at the guy banging on the door to get away from the door. Why is he doing that? Like, get out of here. And so he starts yelling back that your kid broke my windshield, and the kid's dad starts saying, no, he didn't. My son would never do anything like that. Da -da 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 -da. And they're yelling back and forth for a bit, and everyone's listening to the argument, and then they hear fighting start, and at that point, they decide to get out of there. So they all, boom, sprint in every direction. Everybody scatters like a bunch of cockroaches if you've ever lifted up something heavy in a gross person's house. And so, uh, the person who sent this to me goes inside, and they tell their mom, they're like, listen, this is what happened, we were out there playing football, the kid kept cheating. Gives her the rundown, and then says, so he threw a wrench at a car, and it broke the windshield. And his mom starts doing the mom thing, where she's like, why? What happened? When? Like, all of this stuff. So he tells her, and she says, okay, we'll stay in here, I'll be right back. And she goes outside... And he thought she would be right back, but she's gone for a while. And I love how parents always used to do this, dude. When I was younger, my mom would be like, I'll be right back, you know, an hour later. Where were you? Oh, you know, I had to do some uh, taxes. It's even worse when you're at the grocery store, bro. You have, like, the cart full of stuff. You're chilling there. Your mom says she's going to go grab one more thing, and then she's gone, and you, like, get to the point where you're checking out. Uh, she said she'd be right back. Either way, she's gone for about an hour and a half, and she comes back inside, and obviously, he wants to know what happened, and she says, all right, well, basically, the guy and the dad ended up getting into a huge, just big fight, culminating in the dad grabbing a pipe and continuing to break the windshield on the guy's car, which is the perfect reaction, especially when you have a kid and you're trying to teach them how to, like, react to things and be a functioning member of society. Teach them that if they throw a wrench at a car and break a windshield, that the proper response from parents is to break the windshield even further and fight the guy. Obviously, the guy was now very not happy, so he ended up calling the cops. The cops came and, like, took statements and everything. And his mom ended up having to talk to them and be like, well, this is what my son said happened, da 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 And a bunch of other parents were out there. It's not like she was the only parent out there. And uh, the cops kind of were like, well, what do you want to do to the guy who had had this situation happen? And he says, I don't want to press charges, which, you know, I, I kind of get. But at the same time, bro, if he beat the crap out of you, went to his garage, grabbed a metal pipe and then beat your car. I, I don't know. Guy's kind of a stinky poo poo head. Either way, he just said he wanted the damages to get paid for. And at that point, the uh, dad of Eric, who is super, super embarrassed because he had done all of this in front of his neighbors. They're basically all out there watching this go down. They've had to talk to the cops that got called because of this entire ordeal. It's like, fine, whatever, I'll pay for the damages. Just please leave. This is embarrassing. I love how he's embarrassed. Like, you want to know how to avoid this embarrassment? The second the guy knocked on the door, instead of opening it and fighting him right away be like what happened and when he tells you and you find out that's true just offer to fix the windshield either way you ended up having to pay for it 
Except now you had to go through this entire thing and like uh, what you fought for nothing You still had the exact same result. That's what I don't understand about like some people who get into a fight Listen, if you're getting robbed or something like there's certain times you have to punch somebody in the face You got no option. This didn't have to escalate to that It was just really not on that trajectory until he came out and went all like I'm gonna beat you up bro Look at me. I'm a big scary angry Bigfoot guy Whatever, Eric uh, had kind of caused all of this, but at that point his dad was like, you did nothing wrong, it's totally okay, horrible parenting. Even if you overreact and do something nuts, you don't then go to your kid and be like, yep, see, we both did nothing wrong, everyone else are the crazy ones here. Like, you did still beat up someone and then beat their car with a pipe, that's still pretty crazy. I don't really know if you should be telling your kid that he did nothing wrong for throwing a wrench either. But his mom says that's kind of what happened, and uh, they came back inside. And so, she said that he had to stay inside for the rest of the day, which was pretty reasonable, I'm sure things were pretty tense. And so he spent the rest of the day playing PS2, some uh, Ratchet and Clank, which was such a good game, man. I don't really know whatever happened to that franchise, but I'm probably going to break out the PS2 and play it. So whoever sent this to me, thank you for that nostalgia trip. PS2, uh, one of the best consoles of all time. It's not even arguable. Either way, the next day, they were outside and they're all playing football. And Eric comes outside and the subscriber doesn't mention anything about it just because whatever. He didn't really care enough to talk about it anymore, but obviously a lot lot of the people that he was playing football with wanted to talk about it. And so they're like, Eric, what happened yesterday when you broke that guy's windshield? Like, your dad beat him up. What happened? They're wanting uh, his side of the story, obviously, because they're just curious, which is understandable. Kids just be asking questions like that. They just want to know everything. But instead of just saying something along the lines of, like, guys, I really don't want to talk about it, you know? My dad said not to talk about it, so I'm just gonna drop it. Like, I'd prefer it if we moved on or something like that. He goes the route of just trying to gaslight everyone, all like Uh, the 30 40 people that witness things and he says what are you guys talking about and obviously they give him a recap just in case he forgot about how you know he was fixing his bike in the road the guy came honked the horn he threw it his dad got in a fight the cops came all that stuff and he's like no that didn't happen yesterday and everyone's like no it was two days ago and he's like nope no it wasn't I don't think that's ever happened from what I can remember I can't remember anything that has happened along those lines And that's hilarious to me, bro. Like, everybody saw that. You're really gonna go with the whole it never happened thing when it was something of that magnitude? Like, we're not talking about you farting and then going, I didn't fart, you know? Like, it's still weird to deny it to that level, but we're talking about something that everyone definitely knows happened. Like, what what do you mean? No one's gonna forget what went down yesterday. But what's even crazier is it expanded to his whole family. Like, the kid came in and his mom said, well, I talked to their mom and she was just pretending that nothing happened and when I brought it up, she just denied it and said that that never happened. So... I don't really know what's going on, but isn't that weird? And he goes, yeah, well, the kid's denying that it happened too. It was like the entire family was so embarrassed about what had happened that they just decided to just pretend it never happened. The only issue is when your neighbors were literally like giving statements and whatnot and everyone saw it go down, I don't think there's a big capacity for people eventually being like, hmm, maybe I just uh, dreamed the entire thing. And especially there was one time at like a neighborhood barbecue thing where one of the dads brought it up to uh, their dad as a joke. Just trying to be funny and like a bunch of time had passed so everyone was over it anyways. And the guy kind of slammed the lid of the barbecue all pissed off and looked at him and said, I don't know what you're talking about, but even if I did, I think it'd be very inappropriate to bring it up. And the dad was kind of like, okay, sorry, but, you know, it did happen. And he's like, no, it didn't. I can't think of any time that something like that has happened. Which, listen, man, like, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, it is a big deal. But once it's happened, what are you going to do about it? I think pretending that it never happened makes it a bigger deal. Obviously, it's a big deal. What happened? I'm not trying to say that that wasn't a big deal. But you guys get what I'm saying. Like, you're making it weirder by pretending it never happened rather than just 
just being like, look, I lost my temper really, really bad. It's super embarrassing. I prefer not to talk about it because I'm really ashamed of it. I think people would be way more understanding than when you just pretend that everything they witness never happened and make them feel crazy, especially when you're doing it angrily, like you're you're slamming the lid of the barbecue. Oh, I'm mad, but that also never happened. But I'm very mad, but it never happened. And I'm pissed, but it never happened. Like, it's just a very bizarre message. Either way, I guess the moral of the story is that you should not throw wrenches at cars. I'm sure 99% of you already knew that, but for the 1% of the people watching this video who were on the fence about it, don't do it. You're going to end up in a crap ton of trouble and your dad might end up needing to pay for the windshield. All right, don't worry, there's a ton more story times, but I just wanted everyone to know that I do post these as a podcast on Apple, Spotify, everywhere you can find a podcast. If you just look up Scrub Story Time, you can listen on there. Just wanted to let you guys know about that. Enjoy the rest of the video. Grandma destroys spoiled kid. Basically, the person that sent this into me has to take the bus to work because they don't have a car. And yeah, it's not the ideal situation that they would love to be in. But at the end of the day, they're at work to earn money to get a car. And it's not that bad. Like, I feel like the bus gets a bad rap. I'm not saying it's the Taj Mahal, but at the same time, I wouldn't necessarily say, depending on the city you're in, that it's dangerous either. Like, if you've got a good metro system, if buses are actually helpful from getting to point A to point B, there's nothing wrong with that. And if you gotta take the bus to work, you gotta take the bus to work. On this particular day, though, he's trying to get to work, and the bus is late, which was very unusual. It wasn't common for the buses to never be on time, but everyone's kind of standing there and questioning where the bus is, and finally it pulls up, and the bus driver opens the door and is immediately super apologetic, saying that he had had an engine issue and the mechanic had had to come out and fix it, and he's so sorry for being late, but it was not his intention. And everybody immediately calms down and reassures him that, like, it's okay, it's not that big of a deal because he was super apologetic about it, and I highly doubt that the bus driver wanted to be late. It's not like it was his fault. I don't think he was throwing stuff into the engine trying to make it malfunction so he would be late. I, I don't think you would pick that. Maybe I'm wrong. I guess I've never talked to a bus driver about the ins and outs of their job. Maybe they are willing to, like, cause some engine troubles, but I wouldn't want to do that. Being stuck on the side of the road is never a fun experience, so I highly doubt that the bus driver guy was like, I'm gonna stay and just, uh, be here on the side of the road. Especially because there is a chance that people get mad at you for being late, like, even though it's not your fault, there is a chance. I just don't think he would risk it for the biscuit. But there was this younger guy about the same age as the subscriber, like 20-ish, that starts giving the bus driver crap and is... <laughs> Just overall being an unpleasant person, which is dumb, because it's not the bus driver's fault. But he starts going off on the bus driver, saying he was a moron, and now everyone was going to be late because of his stupidity. I just don't really think stupidity has anything to do with engine troubles either. Sometimes cars don't work, right? Like, it is a piece of machinery at the end of the day. Sometimes machines stop working. I don't think he is a moron because the car stopped working. Under that logic, if you've ever had like a computer that stops working, maybe an Xbox, PlayStation, you're a moron. Plus, everyone else is riding the bus and they're not all freaking out and being upset because it's just clearly not the bus driver's fault. What would you have liked him to do? Snap his fingers, pull out the Harry Potter wand, flick it around a little bit and be like, hocus pocus, bus just focus? It's not gonna work, man. There's not really a magic trick. Even if his stupidity managed to break the bus, if he's so stupid he broke the bus, it's not like you want him fixing the bus, so you still would have had to wait for a mechanic. And I don't even think it has anything to do with the bus driver being stupid. I feel like that was just out of pocket. And listen, I get it. I'm sure it's annoying to be late to work or whatever. But if you don't want the chance of maybe being late to work and the bus is late, maybe start walking. I don't know. Even if you had a car, there's a chance you bump into traffic. Obviously, with public transportation, there's a chance it's gonna be a little late. There's a chance it's not really gonna work. So, duh, if you're really, like, hell-bent on always being on time, there never being any potential delays, I think public transport's really not the option for you, but anything other than just walking is probably not a good option for you. Everything else has some problems. And the bus driver's just kind of, like, staring at him while he's going off, not saying anything, because I think contractually in their job, they're probably not allowed to, like, argue back with people, but he's not going to dignify him and say, oh, you're right, I'm so sorry, and blow sunshine up him either. 
At least that's not in their contract. I feel like most places have realized the customer is always right was a very dangerous model and led to people thinking they can boss people around, so now you're just allowed to ignore people. But there's an old lady on the bus who's having absolutely none of it, so she gets involved and is like, hey, leave the bus driver alone, he obviously wouldn't break his bus on purpose, how about you just sit down and enjoy your bus ride and like stop harassing the poor guy. And everybody is just kind of not, not cheering the old lady on, but nodding their head like, yeah, all right, we all kind of agree with her. You should just leave the poor guy alone. And you would think being called out by an old lady would make this guy so embarrassed that he would just shut up and sit down. I feel like if I was doing something and some sweet old lady was like, you're being very rude, I would be so embarrassed. I would want to dig my head into some sand. You know, like how ostriches do when they feel threatened, and then just put it in there until I passed out. Like, that would be my goal. I would be so embarrassed. But he snaps back at the old lady being like, clearly you have nowhere to be. This is very annoying for people that are important and have stuff going on, so how about you shut up? Man, I feel like that would be a little bit of uh, too angry of a response to anyone in this situation, but especially some poor old lady who's just telling you to be nice. Shut up, old lady. You're not important. You have nowhere to be, you absolute loser. That's why you're a pathetic loser who has nothing going on. Your grandkids aren't going to visit you because you're stupid and annoying. She's like, you could have just said no to wanting to buy my cookies. And I think usually some boomers in this situation would have rightfully been like, you are so rude, I can't believe you, this generation is messed up. But not this grandma, she was not here to play. Instead of just letting herself get bossed around like that, she comes back and hits him with the wabam over the top Mike Tyson, not literally, like metaphorically in the insult world. So she just says that clearly she's not the unimportant one because her life's got enough going on where she doesn't have time to get angry at the bus driver for being late. And on top of it, she's not so unimportant at her job that she needs to tear down the bus driver to make herself feel all big. So how about you go ahead and sit down, buddy? And everybody now isn't nodding their head, but just some people have their mouths open like, oh! Because she just bodied him, bro. She kind of had a point. I, I feel like if you've got a lot going on, then really small stuff like someone having car trouble isn't going to ruin your day because you got more important stuff to worry about. If you're the CEO of a company, you're so used to being in charge that hopefully you're not going off on people that have just like made small mistakes that are out of their control. But yeah, if you're getting bossed around at Chuck E. Cheese by a boss that sucks, you might take out some anger on the bus driver to make yourself feel better. I'm not saying it would be the right thing to do, but maybe it does happen. And the guy is just standing there stammering, not really knowing what to reply. Probably didn't expect Grandma to respond. Respond, respond, sorry. And if he did expect Grandma to respond, he certainly wasn't expecting something like that. Maybe something along the lines of, Oh, you don't talk to me like that, young man. That's very disrespectful. No, she came out and said, You're irrelevant, young man. I'm gonna be honest, I've met shrimp that are more important than you. So he's stammering, not really knowing what to say back, just looking like an idiot. And so he replies with this. I don't know why he thought this would be a good comeback. Well, you're old. Like, yeah, dude, she's literally an old lady on the bus. That's just good observational skills. Ah ha ha, you have reached an old age. And she points that out to him too. She's like, wow, nothing gets past you, does it? Which is such a funny response to that. Somebody's like pointing out very obvious things about you. How about you shut your mouth? You have two legs. It's like, oh, wow, oh, crazy. Wow, would you look at that? And then she hits him with the, I'll add it to your list. You're unimportant, dumb, but you're observant. I'll, g I'll give you that much. And now everybody on the bus, like some people are starting to laugh. No one's trying to get involved. No one's yelling or anything. But the guy's standing there stammering and the bus hasn't started moving yet. The door's still open and he's like, you know what? I'm just going to walk. I don't want to be on this bus and gets off and starts jogging from the bus. Which I love in his mind was supposed to be some huge own moment. Like, psh, I don't even want to ride the bus. Oh, so now you were just screaming at the bus driver for being late, but you are going to walk. So clearly him being late wasn't that big of a problem if you have enough time to walk. Just be honest, man. This old lady embarrassed you so hard you did not have the dignity to stay on the bus, so you decided to run to work instead. 
probably showed up all sweaty halfway through a meeting with like a headband on. Whew. Sorry guys, I had to run. I uh, got on the bus. It was a little bit late. I would have been here a lot sooner if I rode it, but an old lady made me feel really, really bad about myself, so I ran instead. They're like, dude, okay, whatever. Just sit down. The meeting started. You're already interrupting it. We don't care about what happened on the bus. But to make things even funnier, as I said, the person who sent this to me is like always on the bus. They take it to work. And this guy does too. And he didn't go magically get a car. He still rides the bus. But because of how embarrassed he got on that day, every time he hops on the bus or interacts with the driver, he's like super shy and just keeps his head down, doesn't look at anyone, doesn't talk to anyone. Which has got to be rough, but at the same time, I would be that embarrassed too. Probably was sitting there, like, eating a sandwich for lunch at work that day. Oh, wow. Yeah, I 100% I did yell at an old lady. That was a little bit out of line. But man, what I will say is don't mess with grandma. She was there to smack him down. And also just, like, don't mess with people that are trying to do their job and something unfortunate happens. Like, if you were at an ice cream store and the ice cream machine broke, would you start screaming at that person until they started crying? Use the salt from your tears and make the ice cream by hand. No, you just wouldn't care. It's, like, kind of the same vibe. Imagine how you would want to be treated if you were having a bad day. So this story takes place when I was like eight, nine years old and there was this park near my house and I was just old enough to like go there and hang out because my parents trusted me to be able to walk down there and obviously it was very exciting for me because I wanted to go to the park a lot. So I was on my way to the park to do what little kids do, pretend to have the force, talk to myself, whatever kids do. Someone's like, oh, you talked to yourself when you were little? I mean, like, uh, use my imagination. Anyways, to get to the playground, you have to, like, run across this field. And I'm running across this field, and I see this kid that looks a year or two older than me inspecting something with a stick. And naturally, being a curious kid, I went over to see what it was, expecting it to be, like, a lizard or something. I don't know, maybe, like, a lump of worms. The way he was inspecting this thing with a stick, I just assumed it was something interesting because he was looking at it with the curiosity of someone, like, watching planet Earth for the very first time. They've never even heard of a polar bear before. And as I start getting closer, I'm confused because I start smelling sauerkraut. And, uh, my Oma, who I spent a ton of time with when I was younger, would always like make sauerkraut for dinner. So I was familiar with the smell as a food, but I had never smelt it on a person. So I started looking around looking for it. And as I got closer, I realized it's coming off of him, which was weird. I didn't think people were supposed to smell like sauerkraut, but I just plugged my nose and got closer and it got weirder because what he was inspecting with this stick and staring at was like dried white dog poop. And so I just say, dude, what are you doing? Like that, not angrily, just curious. And he turns, looks at me and says, why does it matter? Let me play with the dog poop. Keep in mind, I was just asking. It's not like I really cared. So I take his anger as a sign to leave. So I turn around and leave thinking, knock yourself out, man. I don't want to be involved anyways, I've got no desire to be poking dog poop with a stick, so I'm gonna leave, if you're that angry about it, you do you. But I'm turning around and walking away, and I feel this, like, nerve go off, almost like someone's staring at me, not literal nerve, but like, ugh, the heebie-jeebies. And I turn and I see that he's coming at me with the stick that he was just poking the dog poop with, and he has the end that was poking the poop towards me. So I enact evasive maneuvers. I'm not trying to get touched with the poop stick. So I like jump out of the way and I grab the middle of the stick, not where the poop is touched, and I stick it into the ground. And so it goes into the dirt and he exclaims, my stick, as if I did something wrong. I'm just trying to defend myself here. You're trying to stab me with a poop stick like you're a booby trap in the Vietnam War. And, and I'm just trying to mind my business and go back to the slide after you told me to. I love how he acted offended, dude. If anything, I should have been offended. You were out here trying to make me patient zero. Give me some weird disease no doctor's ever heard of before. I don't want to be that guy. Oh, yeah, poor Ryan. He died because that dude stabbed him with the poop stick and he got the poop disease. No thanks. So I don't know why this kid is trying to hit me with the stick or anything. And he says to let go. I say no and I break the stick. I didn't really need to do that. I know some people will say it's mean, but if someone just tried to like stab you with a stick, you'd probably break it too, even if you think it was mean. I wouldn't have had to break the stick if he didn't try to stab me with his poop staff. 
You know, he's out here trying to be Gandalf the Brown, hit me with the you shall not pass gas ever again instead of not pass the corridor or whatever. If someone tries to hit you with their poop stick, I feel like you have the right to break it. Maybe I'm wrong for that. Someone in the comments let me know if I was justified to break the poop stick. But I break it and he starts freaking out saying that I'm going to pay for breaking that stick, whatever, da 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 da, I'm gonna be punished. I said da 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 da, everybody take their shot. Anyways, he starts going off about how I'm gonna rue the day that I broke this poop stick. So I say alright and start walking away. At this point, I think he's just ranting to himself, we'll just go our separate ways and that'll be that. I don't know what you expect someone to do when you try to smack them with the poop stick. Of course they're gonna break it and be mad, so just let me walk away and it's fine. So I keep going across this grass field over to these big slides that were at this park, and as I'm going, I can still smell sauerkraut. And so I look around me, not expecting to see a ginormous bratwurst standing there deliciously, but expecting to see this kid following me, and when I turn around, that's exactly what I see. And he's trying to like follow me slightly from a distance and hide, but he's trying to hide behind trees that are thinner than he is, so it's not working. So I see him and ask him, why are you following me? And he jumps out angrily and says, you broke my stick and I need to get you back for it. You have no idea how long I looked for a stick just like that and now it's broken. And I was really young, eight or nine years old, and I feel like around that time, you know, you, you have a stick that's your club, you have a stick that's your gun, like you just kind of are, are good at using your imagination. And I'll be honest, it was a lame stick, it wasn't even a cool stick that I broke. So I walk over to this tree, and on the ground is a stick that looks very similar, so I pick it up, and I look at the kid, and I say, just take this one. And he starts yelling that it's not the same one, it, it's not even close, he can't believe that I would even suggest that he use that one, da 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 da. I did it again, sorry guys. And so I look at him and say, so it has to be that stick. The one that I broke is the only stick that you're going to take. And he looks at me and completely seriously says yes. So I look at the broken stick on the ground that I broke that he had brought with him and laid out again, and I look back at him, and I look back at the stick, which is broken, and I look back at him and I say, well that sucks, cause guess what ladies and gentlemen, I don't have the power to mend broken things, I'm a child, I can't unbreak a stick, I'm not a Jedi, I can't use my force powers to make it all mend together and everything be one with the force, that's not my forte dude, I just have Lego Star Wars gameplay, I don't have the powers of the people in the background. And he gets all angry with that answer and says that he's going to follow me until I fix it. You can follow me until the cows come home. It's not going to make me a magician, but whatever. I guess this guy's just going to follow me now. I can't unbreak the stick. And I'm really confused if he knows it's impossible and he's just trying to be annoying or if he's just dumb because he's older than me. And I'm like, well, if I know that this can't be fixed, there's no way that you can't know it can't be fixed. But I keep walking to the slides and sure enough, he is following me to the slides. Not much I can do about it at this point, I just decide I'm going to ignore him as long as I can, ride the slides, and leave. If Sauerkraut Boy is going to follow me, my stay at the park got a lot less enjoyable, so I'll just dip. So I get over to these slides and he's still following me and there's a little bit of a line so I wait in line, he's behind me in line, we get to the front of the line and I'm getting ready to go down the slide and he like elbows me out of the way and cuts in front of me. And I'm gonna be honest, I just kinda let him go cause at least that way I can lose him so he slides down the slide and I'm gonna let the kid behind me go. So that way, by the time he's coming back up to the slide, I'm going down, I'll leave, sauerkraut kid can't follow me, I think it's the perfect plan, so I let him go. And so the kid behind me steps up to the tube, sticks his head in to go down the slide and says, Ew, what's that smell? Obviously, it was a tube slide, so the smell of sauerkraut had been trapped, and I start laughing because I think it's funny. But instead of him going down the slide or whatever, I hear an angry roar from inside the slide, like a demon himself trying to like rise up out of the ground. And it's at that moment when I realize somehow Sauerkraut Kid is in the slide and somehow he heard me. Because like a fallout death claw coming out of the sewer, here comes Sauerkraut Kid climbing up the slide screaming about how he doesn't smell and we need to stop laughing. And I'm not saying it's great to make fun of if people smell, alright? In retrospect, was it a little mean? Sure. But if you smell like sauerkraut and like you're in a tube slide and someone's not aware you smell like sauerkraut and they step up and go, ew, it smells, it's kind of funny. 
But it's also at the moment when he's coming up that I realize that he must have been waiting halfway down the slide to, like, wait for me specifically, and I'm sure it wasn't so that way we could have friendship bracelets made. I don't know if he's gonna beat me up, I don't know if he's gonna jump me or what, but I realize that if he gets to this top of the slide and I'm still hanging out there, it might be a problem. So he's nearing the slide, he's coming back up, and me and all the other kids that were waiting to get on the slide start running because this dude seems nuts. At least that's why all the other kids start running. I'm running because I realize that, like, he's probably coming for me. But think about it for all the other really, really little kids waiting in line. They just want to go down the slide. Someone goes down. Someone comes charging up from down the slide screaming and trying to grab someone. To be honest, I'm sure the really little kids probably never wanted to go on a slide again. They tell people this story. They're like, one time I was at a slide and a monster came out of the slide and started attacking people. Whatever, he comes up, everyone's running away, scattering, and there's four large slides up here, so when he gets up and I hear his footsteps running behind me, I decide instead of trying to outrun him, I'm just gonna go down a different slide. So I run to the one that's the furthest away, get in it, and slide down. And I can hear his footsteps coming, I don't know exactly how far away, I would say maybe like, I don't know, 20 feet behind, let's say. I wasn't an expert at judging distance, but I had a little bit of room in between him and me getting on the slide. And I'm going down the slide and I'm in this tube just thinking to myself like, I gotta get away, I gotta get away. I hit the bottom and instead of running, I turn around, jump on top of the tube slide and start climbing back up it. Going for a little bit of a Sly Cooper move where I, I just fastly climb something, just try to get out of the way so the enemy will be confused. And I hear him get to the bottom of the slide and he starts running. And at that point, I get to the top and I hide up there. And I can see that he's running around at the bottom of the slides, but I'm not down there. So I just kind of hide up there. And after five minutes of hiding, I assumed he had either moved on or like given up. So I was probably fine. So I come down and instead of going home, which would have been the smarter decision, I think, well, he's probably gone. So I go over to the playground, which was what I wanted to do anyways. So I'm on the playground minding my business, and I had actually just gotten tall enough to do the monkey bars. So I'm doing the monkey bars, and I'm like halfway through the monkey bars, setting world records, speed running this thing. I might have been new to it, but I was pretty quick. And as I'm in the middle of the monkey bars, I see some other kids looking over, like, kind of nervously. And I don't think anything of it. I think maybe it's their parents saying they gotta go or something. But then I can see one of them point. And then I start getting a little nervous. And after he points, I hear screaming, and I know what they were nervous about. Because I hear, you broke my stick, you broke my stick, you broke my stick. And I look over and it's sauerkraut. He hadn't left, bro. Somehow he had tracked me down again like a bloodhound. So I drop off the monkey bars and he's running at me. And I probably only got like 30 feet between me and him because I was on the monkey bars. So I start running. And I'm running for my life, dude. I don't know if Sauerkraut's gonna put me in, in some, some stew or something if he catches me. Who knows? And I'll give him a compliment. He was persistent. I feel like if I was in his shoes, I would have given up very quickly. I don't have the energy to, like, stay mad at someone to keep chasing them or stick around and keep looking for them. I would have given up, but he did not give up. He was chasing me for quite a while. I wouldn't even have been chasing someone in the first place, I guess. But he was looking for me for a bit, and he would not give up. But what I will say, what he uh, had in persistence, he lacked in athleticism. He was older than me and a bit taller, so realistically, it should have been easy for him to run me down. If you got longer legs, like, you, you got the speed advantage. You should be able to get quick with it, run as fast as you can. But my little legs, dude, were just in better shape than his or something. I don't know, but I kept gaining ground on him. And because I was gaining ground on him and I could tell that he was getting tired, I started getting cocky. So I turn around and I kind of start taunting him a bit. Keep in mind, he's chasing me. And I'm like, come on, slowpoke, come get me. What? You can't keep up? And he starts yelling back, trying to debate with me, saying that I should just stop running because if I stopped running, he could come get me. Yeah, I know, man. That's why I'm saying come catch up, Slowpoke. It's not I'm going to stop and make this a fair fight because you're bigger than me, dude. Why would I stop running? But he's trying to reason with me being like, just stop running and let me catch up. I'm not going to do that. I keep running and I get to the street on the corner where I can like run across the crosswalk to get back to the neighborhood. 
and I'm sitting waiting at the crosswalk because it wasn't a busy street, but the time of night it was. It was just like all the parents were getting home from work. Everybody was heading on home for dinner, so this road was busier than it usually is. And finally, some cars stopped, and I start running across the street. And as I'm running across the street, I hear him way down the road on the other side telling me not to cross the street because that's not fair. Bro, you want to beat me up. It's not about fair at this point, you know? Call me confused, but I've always never understood that logic. Oh, yeah, well, they were fighting, and that wasn't fair. Well, they're fighting, man. Like, it's not really about fair at that point. If you want to beat me up, I'm going to cross the street if you don't want me to cross the street. I'm going to do the opposite of what you want me to do, especially if I know I'm going to lose the fight. The kid was a year or two older than me. Like, what, are, what am I going to do? Angrily attack him with the wrath of a small child? What? That's not going to do anything. Anyways, I get home. My mom's like, how was the park? I say good. I'm not going to say anything. If I told them what was going on, there's no way I'm going to be allowed to go back to the park. So I just went to my room, played PlayStation, actually the original LEGO Star Wars game. It didn't even have like all the episodes. It just had the original three. It was old, but I played that and uh, had myself a great night and I had school the next day. And I get to school and most of the kids in my neighborhood went to that school as well. And one of the kids who lives in my neighborhood walks up to me and says, Hey man, I was at the park last night and this guy was looking around for somebody and it kind of sounded like you. Did you break somebody's stick last night? And I look at him confused and I'm like, what are you talking about, man? Uh, I was at the park last night, but how did you know about this? Because I didn't see you. He had gotten to the park after I had left and gone home. And apparently Sauerkraut Kid had started going up to everyone trying to figure out who I was because he was so mad about that stick being broken that he was like, gonna get revenge on me, dude. And I really don't understand why he was so angry. Literally, I broke the stick he was trying to poke me with after he was poking it with dog poop. If it meant so much to him, why was he trying to poke it with dog or poke the stick? Well, you know what I'm saying. Use that stick for dog poop if it's a good stick. Like, I don't know. If it was some sentimental object, it seems weird to be using it to hit dog poop. But he's out here trying to seek out intel like the CIA on a South American dictator to replace him back when they were doing that in the 80s. Just going way above and beyond, trying to figure out where I live, dude. My autobiography, he wants a, a, a manuscript of the entire shebang. But it gets even better, obviously, because some people live in the area. Some people knew, like, oh, that sounds like Ryan. So when some people said that they knew who I was, he started trying to hire them like a bounty hunter. And their job wasn't to hurt me or anything. It was to make me fix the stick that I had broken. I don't know what the logic there is, bro. You're gonna send like a bounty hunter over to my house, knock on the door. Hey, is Ryan there? We're bounty hunters, we're looking for him. My parents would have been like, he's eight, no. But even if the bounty hunters tracked me down, dude, Django Fett himself kicks in the door at 3 a.m., runs up to my room, screaming at me, you idiot, you broke this stick, throws it at me, now fix it. I would look at him and say, Django, Mr. Django, sir, first of all, huge fan of the armor. Mandalorian's like the only good Star Wars series Disney has done. Great armor, great story. But uh, I, I don't have the ability to mend nature. I don't have magical powers. Because even if you put a bounty hunter on me and they, they manage to, to catch me, man, I'm elusive. I'm out there. Good luck. I, my dad probably would have been really mad if someone tried to kidnap me back in the day. It doesn't give me magical powers. I can't mend items from nature. I'm not a druid. I, I can't summon my ancestors from the earthly kingdoms to come fix this stick for me. I, I'm really out of luck, bro. But he was going above and beyond. And as for what he was going to pay them, it wasn't money, of course. No, no, no. It was going to be in respect. Has to be the worst way to try to get someone to do something for you. Oh, I'll pay you in respect. Yeah, uh, guess what? Respect don't pay the bills, man. When I go to pick out a pack of Pokemon cards, I can't tell the cashier, oh, I'll pay in respect. Either way, the kid in my class who was letting me know about this just wanted me to be careful if I went back to the park because the kid who was looking for me seemed really mad. And I get it, he was just trying to be a good friend. And uh, I, I did appreciate the heads up, but I was not about to stop going to the park. Probably dumb. Kids are dumb. I was dumb. So I probably should have been like, oh, maybe I should tell my mom. But in my head, I was like, I'm not going to tell my mom because she won't let me go to the park anymore. And B, I'm not going to stop going to the park because I've got to have somewhere to pretend to be a Jedi. All right. Like there, there's certain things that have to happen. And my priorities when I was eight years old was very much at I'm going to go to the park regardless. It doesn't matter. Even if there's a forest fire there, I'm going to go. 
Uh, but I did think it was at least flattering that he wanted to hire a child bounty hunter on me. Coney 2020 12. 2020 2012? Coney 2012 would have been proud of him. He would have been like, oh, you're trying to recruit a child army? That's exactly what I did. It was a little flattering, you know? Uh, I don't think anyone really took him up on the offer. As I said, he was trying to pay them with respect. But I did end up going back to the park, and I can say, funnily enough, that it was not my last run-in with Sauerkraut Kid. But it's gonna be a long story if I do it all in one video, and I don't even know if you guys are gonna like this. Alright, so this guy got a job as a security guard at a department store, thinking that there would never really be anything he had to do, you know? He literally applied with it thinking that like, oh, malls are dying, no one's there anyways, it's not like I'm gonna have to be doing a whole lot of securing. And for 90% of the time, he was absolutely correct. It was a very boring job, he would just kind of walk around like Paul Blart. Except he never had to give the illusion he had a weapon on a Segway. He would just kind of look at everyone and say, Hi, how are you? You know, every now and then he might have to go stand there while a customer was getting kicked out or whatever. But usually when security showed up, people were like, I'm just going to go because they didn't want it to turn into a bigger thing. So it was a really easy job. There was one dumb rule he hated though, which was that they really couldn't do anything against people that were shoplifting. Like if people were taking stuff, they could say, hey, we see you taking stuff, but they couldn't chase them out of the store. They couldn't like take the stuff back. I understand it's an insurance liability, but in my mind, it's like, what's the point of having security if they can't actually secure the stuff? Is it just to make people think twice about it? Whatever, either way, every now and then someone would steal stuff, they would usually go confront them, and the person would just kind of leave the store, sometimes with the stuff, sometimes without it, so that sucked, but that was the only thing that really, really he didn't enjoy. Otherwise, it was getting paid to just kind of stand around a mall that was mostly empty and just look at stuff and be like, wow, this department store sure would have been popping in 1957. One day, though, the manager comes over the radio and is like, Hey, we have a guy that looks like he's taking stuff in the men's shoe section. Can you come over here and just keep an eye on it and see what's going on? And that wasn't an unusual call. It wasn't super common, but he had done that before. So he goes over there and he's a little bit confused. Because the only guy in this shoe section is this dude wearing, like, head-to-toe designer. His outfit probably costs about as much as the security guard's car. Like, he just was very confused on why this guy would be stealing. But sure enough, he starts kind of watching him from afar. And he watches the guy pick up one of the display shoes that doesn't actually have a pair. It's more just kind of there so people know what it looks like. And he cuts the little wire that he has with scissors and puts it in his jacket. And the security guard's really confused as to why you would ever want a display shoe. It's not something he's ever really thought about someone stealing before. So he decides to go confront him and he walks up to him and just says like, Hey man, you have to put that back. You can't take that. Which is a pretty nice way to confront a shoplifter. It's not like, Stop thief! I will cut off your hand! Just, hey, can you please put that back? You can't take that. Pretty chill. But the rich kid turns around and looks at him like he's just a, a magic dragon with three heads, dude. Just the most insane thing he's ever seen before and says, Are you talking to me? And the guard's a little bit confused because he's literally the only person in the section. There's, there's no one else there. There's no one else he even could be talking to unless he's going full Foster's home for imaginary friends right now. So he says, yeah, I'm talking to you. And before he can get any other words out, the kid immediately is like, what did I do? Why do you need to talk to me? I didn't do anything. Which is a really weird thing to do if you actually didn't do anything. I mean, I guess that could be your reaction. But if somebody says, hey, put that back, and you didn't take anything, you would go, oh, I didn't take anything. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't think you would just start immediately start screaming, what did I do? And so the security guard's confused, so he just tells him, like, look, dude, we don't have to make a scene, we don't have to scream, I'm, I'm not gonna, like, call the cops or anything, just put back the shoe and leave and we're good. You are doing the most by making this into a scene and yelling, like, you don't have to do that. And he starts yelling back at the security guard that, you're the one making this scene, you're the one who walked up to me and started accusing me of stealing... And the security guard at this point looks around to see if, like, there's anyone around even watching this. There's nobody in the store. 
So he looks at the guy and is like, there's literally nobody here. Why are you yelling? Why are you screaming at me? Why are you accusing me of making a scene? There's no one around to even observe the scene if there was one. But I think at this point, the rich kid thought that he was going to be able to like guilt trip his way out of it. So he says, well, you're accusing me of being a thief and it's, it's making me upset. And the security guard says, I'm not accusing you of being a thief. I watched you take the shoe. And the kid's like, what shoe? What shoe? Tell me what shoe's missing. So the security guard walks over to the empty spot on the display where the display shoe is missing and says that one, the one that you took that's in your pocket. And he points at the kid's like jacket pocket. And a shoe doesn't really fit in a jacket pocket incredibly well. So it's very obvious that there's a shoe in his pocket. But he denies it again. He's like, there's no shoe in my pocket. Anyways, the kid does this like very over the top spin move thing, like puts out his arms and does an aggressive spin, trying to show that there's nothing in his jacket, he didn't take anything. The only problem is his like super over the top move to show that he had nothing causes there to be enough force from the spin for the shoe that he had in his jacket to come flying out of his pocket. And I would love to say that it went flying across the entire store, hit the manager, knocked him out. They like fell asleep in front of the receipt machine. That's not what happened. It just plops onto the ground. But the security guard looks at it. The kid looks down, looks at it, realizes what it is and yells, that's not mine. Yeah, everybody just carries around an extra display shoe on them at all times, just in case they need to do something like this. It's not yours. You're right. It's not yours because you weren't supposed to have it, but you were trying to take it. So the security guard just says, okay, picks it up and puts it back. And the kid is still standing there just staring at him, not really knowing what he's going to do. And he's like, well, what are you going to do about it? And the security guard says, I think that you should just leave. Like, just leave, bro. Keep in mind, he knows he's stolen it. They have security footage of him stealing it. If he really, really wanted to, he could call the cops and it would take forever for them to come because they have more important stuff going on, but he could get in trouble. The kid, not realizing this though, thinks that he's just being soft and like not wanting to do anything or like is afraid of him. So he starts talking crap to him like, oh, don't you have anything better to do than sit here and stop me from taking one shoe? I mean, it's his job. It's what he's being paid to do. So by definition, I'm sure he has stuff he'd rather be doing. But in this moment, yeah, he he has nothing better to do than stop you. I love that idea. What? You have nothing better to do? That's like getting mad at a traffic light for changing colors. Don't you have anything better to do than change colors? It's like, that's literally what traffic lights do, man. Security guard, security guard things. Like, it's just what they're supposed to do. What do you mean, don't you have anything better to do? No, that's why he's here at this moment. You think he just volunteers? You think there's not an exchange of money for his services? You think this is just what he decided to spend his Saturday doing, volunteering to protect the department store? But anyways, he starts trying to talk crap and the security guard just wants him to leave. It's more annoying for him to be here. So he reminds him again, listen, I could have you arrested, but I'm telling you to just leave. So go ahead and go. And the kid says something about how he's not going to leave. No one can make him leave. Even if he was going to steal something because he didn't actually steal it, he can't get in trouble. And then the security guard just takes a step towards him, not because he was going to grab him or anything, but because he was just going to walk away and he was happening to walk past him. He could tell that this kid wanted an argument more than anything, so his plan was like, all right, well, if I just walk away and he's left to talk to nobody but himself, eventually he'll tire himself out and leave. But for whatever reason, this like spoiled kid who is still trying to argue about stealing a solitary shoe while wearing $7,000 worth of clothes thinks that he's like coming over to him. So he starts screaming out that the security guard can't arrest him. He doesn't have the right to detain him. And he starts backing up and the security guard isn't going to arrest him. He doesn't even have that authority, but he's not exactly explaining. I don't have that authority. He's just continuing to try to walk past him. And the kid starts freaking out, turns around, and starts sprinting. And where they were at was like the shoe department against the back wall. And it was a straight shot, probably three, four hundred feet to like the door to leave the store. So he starts running away as fast as he can. And the kid was pretty fast. Even the guy who sent this in to me was like, I'll give it to him. He had a good 40 time. 
I don't know if it's going to be good for the NFL draft or whatever, but still, like, the kid was fast. You got to give it to him. And he's running away, but the guard was never chasing him in the first place. He was not going over here to try to arrest him at all. He was just trying to walk past him. So the kid looks back and thinks that the guard isn't chasing him or has already given up, when in reality, the chase just never started. And he thinks it's because he's just so incredibly fast. So he starts saying that he practices running every day. He see like the stupid security guard can't catch him so much for Paul Blart thinking he had the ability to keep up. The security guard hasn't taken any steps above a walking pace, like not even once. This kid is so off in his own world, he's convinced himself he's in a high speed chase that isn't happening. Imagine being with a person in the car and like a cop car's behind you with no lights on. They just start driving insanely fast. The car doesn't even start chasing you. And they're like, dude, did you see how we escaped that cop chase? What are you talking about, man? Like no one was even chasing you. But whatever, as he's running away while like looking back, talking crap to the guard for being too slow, not being able to catch him, he's not really paying attention. He's more focused on taunting than he is looking where he's going. And he doesn't realize that when you're really fast, you cover ground quickly, and he's running out of room fast. And it just so happened that these doors were a pull door to exit. So, like, if he runs into them, it's not going to push open with him. He's going to smack into the door. And I'm sure the security guard could have theoretically said, Watch out! You don't want to run into that door. But he's sitting there thinking to himself, that's what a good security guard would do. Remember, he's slow and stupid and all these other things this kid has said, and a slow, stupid security guard wouldn't warn someone they're about to run into a door. Keep in mind, the kid isn't getting away with anything. He left the shoe he was trying to take, which still doesn't make any sense. He was trying to steal a shoe? A shoe? What, did you just want some, like, sick drip for the hopscotch competition? In what scenario is having one shoe gonna cut it? Whatever, though, he's full sprint, and now he's critically close to the door. There's no way he's going to be able to avoid smacking into it. But instead of running into it chest first, it's almost like he feels something coming, so he turns his head to look at the very last second. And the second he looks, he smacks into the door, and he's going full speed. And he's not like a really tiny guy, so he smacks into the door with some force. And where this person lives, it happens to get really bad storms, so this door had gotten like hurricane strength glass, which is why it didn't break. But what did break is his nose. Because when he had turned to look and just be straight ahead, his nose smacked straight into the glass, and it broke. And he knew it was broken because immediately it just started pouring blood. And so the kid looks back at the security guard now after he's smacked into the door and broken his nose. And as much as the security guard would love to pretend that he like felt really bad and immediately wanted to help him, he's straight up in tears laughing. Imagine someone trying to get away saying that you're an idiot, you're never going to be able to catch them. They turn around, smack so hard into a door they break their nose. You'd feel bad, but at the same time, you would be giggling. But he looks back all embarrassed, clearly ashamed, I would be too, trying to make a quick escape talking crap and ending up like that. And to make it even more, like, sweet for the security guard, his bloody nose had just leaked all over his designer shirt. So here he is, broken nose, no single shoe that he was trying to steal, and blood all over the designer shirt. Seems like the least profitable shoplifter of all time. Destroy a shirt that's worth a couple hundred dollars while trying to steal a single shoe that no one was going to buy. And also, how stupid, man. Like, it's one thing if you're having to steal baby formula because you're having a rough month and you don't have food to feed your kid, but you gotta make ends meet. It's still not good to steal, but I think everyone could understand, maybe, if you're in that situation. If you're wearing a shirt that costs a couple hundred dollars, trying to steal shoes that cost like forty dollars, I don't feel bad for you, I just think you're a moron, because if you wouldn't have bought the shirt for a couple hundred dollars, you, you probably could have afforded the shoes. Like, goodness gracious, he probably thought it would disguise him. They're never gonna think I'm shoplifting anything if I'm wearing designer. Meanwhile, the security guard, while he's obviously cutting the single shoe off the wire. Anyways, he's standing there, blood dripping out of his broken nose, the security guard laughing. But the kid has to leave. It's not like he can turn around and get any help because he just tried to steal from the store. So he turns and starts trying to push the door open. It's a pull door. I'm sure the adrenaline in the moment, like the pain, you know when you get hit in the nose and you can't really see? 
He starts trying to shove on this door to the point where he's like basically banging on it before he figures out it's a pull door. And this, him messing with the door and failing, just looking like a moron, is making the security guard laugh even harder, because, like, how could you not? After a very long fight, he gets the door open, he leaves, and the security guard starts walking over there, still laughing, crying about it all, and gets on the radio saying that he needs to talk to management because something happened. They just have to fill out a report any time anyone gets injured in the store, whether or not it was an accident or whatever. But the manager comes down, and keep in mind, the last time the manager had seen anything is when they had called over and been like, hey, someone's trying to steal some shoes. So they come around the corner, and all they see is the security guard with tears in his eyes and a huge pool of blood. And they start freaking out like, oh my god, what happened? Oh, is everything okay? Oh my gosh, I'll call 911. The security guard's like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And they start asking, well, what happened? Like, why is there a pool of blood on the floor? Why are you crying? Like, what happened? It is weird to be crying if, if a pool of blood is on the ground unless someone got injured, you know? So he explains that he was laughing so hard he was crying and says that he confronted the guy. The guy started freaking out even though it, like, really wasn't that deep. Next thing you know, he tries to sprint out even though no one is chasing him, smacks into the door, breaks his nose, struggles trying to get the door open to the point where, like, all this blood out of his nose is pooling there and he finally gets, out, uh, gets away. But, like, yeah, someone had to clean it up and he knew they had to file a report. And the manager is standing there, listening to this rendition, and tells the security guard, like, I know you guys aren't supposed to hit shoplifters, but, like, it's okay, I won't tell anyone, that story's ridiculous. They just didn't believe that that had actually happened at all. They thought the security guard had gotten a little bit over the top and, like, hit the guy. The guy had gotten away, but he was trying to make up some story to cover himself from getting fired. And the security guard is like, I'm 100% serious. In fact, if we go watch the footage, you will see that what I'm saying is the truth. And the manager and now the head security guard are over there, and they're both trying to convince this guy that they shouldn't go watch the footage. Because if they watch the footage and they see that it was a fight or something, they're going to have to fire him and report it. Whereas if they just say that, like, you know, it was an accident and don't watch the footage, then it's okay. He doesn't want everyone to think that he was attacking this poor guy, though, so he says, no, let's go watch it. And they're fighting with him, like, we don't want to watch it, we like working with you, come on, let's go watch it. So reluctantly, the three of them go into the security office, they start moving the camera around to uh, the time where it was, and sure enough, they see this entire thing go down. They see, like, this comically weird battle where the security guard is really calm, the kid's screaming, and then out of nowhere, he takes off sprinting, looking back, talking trash, not paying attention, turns, smacks into the door, blood starts going everywhere, and he leaves. And he's relieved that everybody now knows that he's telling the truth, but he starts looking at the manager and his, like, boss, and both of them are in tears laughing because they can't believe how dumb this guy was. So they make him retell the story again, and they start calling basically everybody in one by one, like, you gotta see this, you gotta see this, you gotta see this. And by the end of that guy's shift, basically every single worker in this department store had seen it. A bunch of people had like, you know, started telling other people about it. There were other stores in the mall that had come over and asked to see the footage because someone had gone on their lunch break and hung out with X from X store and told them about it. But what makes this sweeter is him breaking his nose was so funny they're showing everyone, right? And while they're showing somebody, somebody recognizes him, tells them who he is, and through that, they're able to track him down. Come to find out, he's like the son of some people that are super prominent in the community. So they contact them, send them the footage, they say, yeah, that's our son, and he gets banned from the mall. But not just, like, banned. We're talking about actually banned. Like, everyone in every store is aware of him. Which happens usually, but because this kid had become so famous within the mall community because of, like, how embarrassing it was, everyone at that particular mall knew who he was. And because his parents were prominent in the community, they were so embarrassed by this, because imagine having, like, a good business reputation. Next thing you know, your kid gets caught trying to steal a shoe, roasting the security guard, trying to run away and breaking his nose. You probably would ground him too, let's be honest. So they ground him because they're so embarrassed, so he probably messed that up too, all to steal a display shoe. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm no mathematician, but uh, if I do a cost-benefit analysis on that real quick, I don't think it was worth it. I still don't understand what he was trying to do. Like, was it a dare or something? We dare you to go in there and steal a shoe? What a stupid dare, especially because they just abandoned you, man. Like, if your friends would have been waiting outside for you, that's one thing. They didn't care. Could you imagine he had to go to school with this broken nose? Everyone's like, oh, what happened? As much as he wishes he had some cool story like fighting an alligator, it's just actually that he managed to walk in the glass too hard. And uh, yeah, today I've got a story time from back when I would spend quite a bit of time in Xbox Live parties. I would come home, do my homework, wink wink, I didn't really do it, hop into an Xbox party and play Call of Duty until I had to go to bed. And I had this party I would regularly hang out in, and one day I joined and there was this guy that I had never played with before, and he seemed fine. Except we started playing and he just started talking a lot of crap, like a lot of crap. To the point I was almost wondering if he had food poisoning or something. There was so much crap spewing out of his mouth I was wondering if his butt was gonna get jealous. We were all on the same team, but anytime any of us would like die to something in Call of Duty, which is just going to happen unless you're like an elite pro level player, and even then, still probably gonna happen, he would just tear into us and say we were trash and he was so much better and it was so hard that he was gonna have to carry us because we were practically useless. And you would think if you're talking like that to a bunch of people in an Xbox party, you better be carrying. Like, I better pull up that scoreboard, see you have 300 kills, zero deaths, you've called in so many tactical nukes, the game broke and just didn't end. But no, it, it's weird. I pull up the scoreboard and he's not at the top, he's not second, he's like fourth. So I say something back to him along the lines of like, hey man, crazy that you're gonna be talking that much crap when you're not even at the top of the scoreboard. And he starts going off on me, saying that I was trash, there was no way if anyone in the party was gonna have an issue with him talking garbage, it was gonna be me. And I did what anyone would do in that situation, at least I think anyone would do in that situation. At that point, I said, all right, well then let's 1v1, bro. Like, let's see who's actually better. And everybody else in the party was like, yeah, dude, we'll watch, we'll watch, we'll spectate, we'll spectate. And I played a bunch with these guys in the party. And one thing that we would do when someone was annoying us is we would challenge them to a 1v1 in Call of Duty, talk a lot of crap, and then turn on headshot only before the game would start. And all this does is like most people can't hit a headshot or don't go for it off rip in Call of Duty. So you turn that on, you know, and then they just get really mad and start blaming lag and their Xbox and getting pissed off and you giggle. I didn't actually care if I was better than this kid. At this point, I just wanted to piss him off. So they said they were going to watch and he's like, yeah, no problem. I'll destroy you. I'm not even stressed about it. And it's a pretty dumb trick at this point. I feel like people would catch on pretty quick. But back then, I feel like people weren't watching YouTube as much. And he was already mad, that's the key. Like, he was already pissed enough that I uh, had challenged him on his Call of Duty skill, that he was just hell-bent on proving me wrong. And I don't know, like, it was just me he really had a problem with. He was talking trash to everyone, but he really didn't like me, but I think he thought that if he beat me in a 1v1, it was gonna, like, look cool to everyone else there. And so I'm just saying that, uh... Yeah, you're not even gonna be able to beat me, like, I'm starting to amp him up. He's already mad, he's already in more than he should be, so I just keep making him angrier and angrier before we've even started. And we had done this before, and usually people would get mad, but more angry in the party of like, what are you guys doing, you're cheating, this is stupid, something in the game's clearly not working. Fair enough, something in the game was not working. It's not even really rage, they would just get mad and then we would stop the game. We had made some people yell with it, but like we had never made anyone break anything. That was not the point of it. It was usually just something to slightly annoy everyone. And while I'm setting up the game, he's talking even more crap. And now he's saying that whoever loses has to leave the Xbox party. So I say, you're on, man. But if you lose, you have to leave. Like you can't say that. And if uh, I win, you're like, oh, I'm not going to leave. And he's so confident, he says, I shouldn't even worry about that because I'm going to get destroyed. Like, I'm going to get clapped so hard, I won't even know what hit me. He's going to enjoy watching me get kicked from the party. I'll probably never be back in a party like this anyways. He's talking a ton of crap. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm definitely talking back, like we're going at it back and forth and I'm having fun with it because I know he's about to get really pissed off because it's headshot only and he doesn't know that. So... 
whatever. I'm taunting him back and forth. He starts talking about my mom, the way Xbox arguments would go back in the day, just the typical stuff. I start saying, at least I know mine. Like, we're just going back and forth. We're being horrible to each other. We're talking trash. But that's just what everybody did back then. Like, I, I don't know. Call of Duty back then was super toxic, but people would just be like, yeah, well, your mom's a stupid hoe. Well, at least I know my mom, man. Yeah, well, your mom is is more popular than uh than than some green stuff at a Snoop Dogg concert. How about that? Like you would just go back and forth. So we finally stop talking trash and we start the game. And off rip, he runs right over to me. Boom! I I get him really quick. He doesn't even have time to like see me or do anything about it. And I start talking trash, and he's pretty pissed off. But he hadn't caught on yet. He didn't even have an idea that something was wrong with the game because he hadn't shot at me yet. So. He starts running right back over to me, and he's talking trash into his microphone, and I can tell he's getting angrier because it's gone from, like, just trash talking. To back in the day, the Xbox 360 mics were really bad, and if you started, like, screaming or angrily talking into your mic, it would just peak constantly. And I know I'm making him angrier because his mic went from semi-clear to, like, Dude, I'm gonna get you! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! That's my best imitation of it, but when it sounds like somebody's munching on the microphone, almost as if Shaggy and Scooby found a sandwich while they were looking for the criminal, just munching on it. It sounded like he was eating his mic, and we're only one death in. So he comes back, he like takes a shot at me, it misses, I get him again, and I start talking trash, and the party is laughing because they know that he's this mad and we haven't even started like showing him that something's wrong with the game yet. And now he's yelling even louder. He's saying that where I am is a stupid spot. I shouldn't be able to sit there. There's no reason for me to be there. If I wasn't in that spot, he would have gotten me already. So I'm still taunting him, but I say, all right, man, here, I'll move. I will go somewhere else, 100%. I agree, that's totally unfair. But I bet you, you still won't be able to get me because you're so garbage. And listen, was I hyping him up a little bit more than I should have considering I had headshot only on? You bet, but I was young and this guy sucked, so I don't really feel that bad about it. I was having myself a great time. And so I moved and was standing out in the middle of the open. I'm just not even behind any cover. I'm not worried about it, because, like, this guy's already mad, he's not gonna have good aim. And he's saying where he is while he's screaming into the microphone, and he comes around the corner, and I'm standing there, and he lights me up. Just brrrr, like an entire clip straight into the chest. And, believe it or not, I don't die. Headshots only is something crazy, because if you don't get a headshot, nothing happens. And he starts freaking out. Oh my goodness, my internet is so bad. This lag is dumb. I just lit you up and nothing happened. Why is the internet so bad? Oh, my parents are so cheap. Why won't they just get good internet? This is so stupid. And I'm starting to laugh out loud. I can't hide it anymore. Most of the party is laughing because we just watched that happen while he's freaking out. And he thinks that we're laughing at him, which, don't get it twisted, we were laughing at him, but we were more laughing at the fact that he hadn't caught on yet. So he starts giving me this insane speech, like I'm the anime villain, and this is his show, about how no matter how much I think that he's out of the fight, he's always gonna work harder to get back into it, and it doesn't matter how much I laugh and think he's bad, he's always gonna try a little bit harder. So even though I'm laughing now, he will be the one with the last laugh. Yeah, okay, bro, sure. It's a Call of Duty 1v1. It's really not that deep, but for some reason, he's giving me a monologue like it's a very important uh, political speech. He's got to convince me to get on his side. He's in the locker room. We're down 80 points at halftime. Like, that's the speech he's giving me. And I'm just laughing about it, and so he finishes his little speech about how he's never going to give up, and I'm like, yeah, it's not about giving up. If you were good, you wouldn't be in this position in the first place. You can't get me if you wanted to. I don't care about your stupid speech. And when I say that it was just some stupid little speech, he does the ree like an angry ree and starts rushing over to me. And I do the same exact thing where I just stand out in the open. I want him to come light me up with a clip and absolutely nothing to happen. I think that would be hilarious. So he comes over and lights me up and nothing's happening and he's like, I hate this game. I hate my internet. I hate my house. And I'm laughing so hard, I have tears in my eyes. Because all this happened because he was talking trash. And if he would have just critically thought for a second, it would be obvious what was going on. But he was so convinced that it was like, 
his internet connection. He was so mad at me because I was laughing that he just would not think. And so I turn around and I get him like right away with one shot. And so at that point, we hear the headset come off and get like set on the ground and we hear him just storming around wherever he had his Xbox set up in his house. We hear things getting pulled off the shelf. We hear things hitting the ground. It sounds like a tornado is going. I know they got that hurricane down in Florida right now. I hope everybody's safe. But like that's how much damage this guy was doing to his house, dude. Almost like Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender summoned up one of those little air balls that he would ride around. Just like everything's sounding like it's getting broken. And we hear him getting further and further away from the mic. And it's like, dang, he's really mad. He's been breaking stuff for a few minutes now. And then we hear him say that I hate this stupid thing. I don't even want to play anymore. And we hear a big crash and blink. Like, you know, the sound that the Xbox used to make when someone would leave a party. I don't know if it still does it. But it would make a noise when someone would leave the party. And the second we heard the crash, like, Blink has left the party. And we thought, okay, he probably just turned off his Xbox, turned off the router, the internet, you know, his parents got mad. We'll see him soon. And ladies and gentlemen, it was months and months and months until I bumped into this dude again in an Xbox party. And I see him and I go, hey man, it's been a while. What happened? And he's really sheepish about it, but I press him. I'm like, dude, like you used to play with my friends all the time. Like what happened? And he says, well, that day we got into a 1v1 and you beat me. I broke my Xbox. And I'm like, what? What? Why would you do that? And he says that he was just so mad at the game that he walked over there and his dad had a rubber mallet because he was working on something and he took it and just hit his Xbox and it wouldn't turn on. And he tried to ask his parents for a new one and they wouldn't buy him one. Which like, yeah, probably the best way to do it, make him earn it. He had to go get the money for it. Usually in these stories, the spoiled kid just gets handed another Xbox. At least these parents had the nerve to be like, no, if you smash your Xbox with a hammer, I'm not going to replace it. You got to go out and work and get another one. What's wrong with you? It'll probably teach him a little bit more of a lesson. But as he's telling me this, he's like embarrassed about it, saying that he never should have been that mad. And even if he was lagging super hard, it was never a reason to break the game. And I don't really know this dude, we're not close friends, so I'm sitting there and I'm like, ah, I could tell him that I had headshot only on, or, or, I could just make him think that he broke his Xbox because of lag. And because I didn't know the dude very well, I decided on option B and said, yeah, well, uh, I I guess it's, I guess it's good that you got an Xbox back, good for you for working on it, and I left the party. Because listen, he made the choice to hit the Xbox with the hammer. That wasn't my choice, all right? I had nothing to do with that. That was not on me. Plus, if somebody tells you all this, are you going to point out that you did it on purpose? Well, I didn't do it on purpose. It was not my goal to make someone break an Xbox. To be clear, every other time we had done that to mess with people, they just got mad and then figured it out and like left the party. Never once before did it even cross our minds that someone was going to break their stuff because of it because it's stupid. It doesn't mean anything. Moral of the story though, don't break your electronics and uh, if you can't hit someone in a 1v1, make sure they don't have headshots only on. All right, so this person recently moved to Los Angeles, which, you know, I, I know a lot of people do that. It's certainly a choice. That's all I have to say about it. And because they live in LA, they decided one day to go for a walk because the weather's beautiful and they're out and about and they get to a crosswalk and they start walking across when they're supposed to. It's not like they're going when traffic's going or whatever. They don't want to get hit by a car. And they walk out when the crosswalk says walk, but when they get out into the street, a car like slams on the brake, screeches to a halt and starts blaring the horn at them. And the person who sent this to me is just confused because it's like, dude, you were about to run a red light and hit a pedestrian and you're mad at me? So the person turns and looks, obviously, and it's very evident that it's like a a rich kid driving his dad's car, you know? It's a car that costs way too much money for a dude that like definitely has not lived enough life to have made that much money, if that makes sense. And he just kind of gives him like a, like a, what the heck? Like, you know, when you do the shrug, like, bro, what the heck, right? Like you're blaring the horn at me, but you almost hit me with your dad's car, man. He would have been pissed. Trust me, a Rolls Royce is not a cheap vehicle to get the hood fixed on when you slam into somebody in a crosswalk, you know? And the guy, when he sees him do the shrug, the like, what the heck signal, decides to lay on the horn again. And he's just literally laying on it, blaring it at this guy. And the top is down, it happens to be a convertible. 
And because this guy's just being a jerk, he decides to just, like, make a comment at him, and it's not a nice comment. So as he's, like, blaring the horn at him, he says, Hey, man, nice car. Tell your dad it's sick. And the guy throws the car into park and gets out of the car. And now the person that sent this in to me is expecting the throw down. Like, if this is the interaction and the guy gets out of the car pissed off, even if you're not looking for a fight, I think we would all assume that this guy's coming to punch you in the face. Like, that just seems to be what the next move is. And he starts walking towards him, and so the person that sent this in to me, like, puts their hands up ready to go, and the guy stops when he sees that, puts his arms out to, like, show he's not a threat and goes, So what if it's my dad's car? Why does it matter? Which is so funny, because the guy wasn't really that mad. Like, hey, man, if your dad had a Rolls Royce and let you drive it, you probably would too. He just made a comment thinking it would piss the guy off, and it definitely worked. And so he starts laughing because he just can't believe that, like, the bait worked that well, you know? It it just literally like a fishing rod out to sea with a bunch of hungry fish. The bait got taken immediately. And when he starts laughing, the spoiled guy goes, Yeah, that's right. My dad's rich, bro. My dad's rich. He's got a cool car. I drive it. So what? And it's like, yeah, okay, man. No one's really mad at you. It's just more funny that it bugs you so much. Like, the fact that you got out of the car and started approaching the guy like you were gonna fight him because it made you so upset that he pointed out that you're driving your dad's car. And even then, even if your dad's rich, even if he lets you drive your car, it doesn't mean that you can just, like, run red lights, especially when there's pedestrians in the road. It's not a Grand Theft Auto server. I don't know, man. I just feel like that's a very dangerous practice. A, because it's irresponsible. You're gonna hurt somebody. Like, you could kill somebody doing that, for real. And on top of that, like, there's no benefit, and it doesn't matter that you have money. If you hit a pedestrian when they're allowed to be walking, you're going to jail. So whatever, he kind of tells the spoiled guy, like, even if you have a nice car, you still have to follow the law, you know? And the guy looks at him and completely seriously goes, I can do whatever I want, man. My mom owns LA, bro. Oh, oh, does she? Is she on the deed? I didn't realize that the public city was personal property. Apparently, this guy's mom just owns the entire city. So whatever, if you live in LA, I know like six million people do, be on the lookout because apparently there's a guy rolling around ignoring all the traffic laws because his mom owns the city. I feel like LA just attracts these type of people for some reason, you know? Like, I I feel like it's just got to be one of the most entitled places. But I think that's any big city to be fair. There's a lot of good people in LA if there's six million people, you know? I just feel like the more people you get in one area, there's just bound to be a lot more entitlement out of some of them. All right, this next one was sent in to me by somebody that had this happen at the beginning of their college, like, experience, you know, it was at the start of their freshman year. If you don't know, most colleges, like, freshman classes are absolutely massive. Three, four hundred people crammed into a hall, just all sitting there listening to a professor talking about stuff. And because of that, everyone just kind of knows to, like, shut up, because the professor definitely doesn't know who you are, and there's so many people that no one really cares what you have to say, you know? No offense. It's just like, imagine being in an auditorium and one person keeps making the class go on longer than it has to. It would be really annoying. But whatever, on this particular day, the professor goes ahead and assigns some homework. And it's not an insane amount of homework. It was reasonable. It was a complicated concept that they probably needed more time to really learn. You know, we all know the difference between, like, homework that's absolute garbage that a teacher is just giving to be homework or a professor is giving to just be annoying. And, like, everyone knows the time where you're like, all right, this is fair. I probably do need to work on this a little bit. The professor gives one of those assignments, and a kid raises his hand. And like I said, not a lot of people raise their hand, so the teacher is like, yeah, what? And he said, uh, honestly, man, I straight up think that that's mad unfair. And the teacher doesn't even know how to respond to that, because it's probably the first time in their career that they've ever had someone be like, I'm gonna be straight up, bro. That homework is mad unfair, bro. Straight up. Straight up, man. And so the teacher starts to, like, ask, what do you mean by that? Like, this is a college classroom. This is a college class. There's going to be homework. It's going to be a little bit more intensive than what you're used to. So what do you mean? This is mad unfair. He literally says it like that. And you know when you start getting, like, older people to try to use your slang that you've probably pressed a button, you know? If your mom's ever like, oh, do I have swag now? She's probably not happy. I know swag is old. They always use terms that are a little bit too outdated, you know, because they're still parents. But the spoiled kid looks at the professor and says, I still need to have time to live my life, bro. Huh? 
You ever think about that, Professor Buzzkill? Huh? How about that? And the professor literally doesn't know how to respond to that because I'm sure they're used to being called like professor, teacher, their name, you know, like their last name. I highly doubt that they're walking around campus and people are like, yo, Professor Buzzkill, what's poppin', man? You gonna come to the party later? I feel like we all know that professors are buzzkills. Like, I feel like by default, it's just a profession that is kind of a buzzkill because they have to do things like assign homework. And the professor's really confused, so they start asking questions like, aren't you paying to be taught this stuff? Like, don't you want to know what I'm teaching you? Like, sometimes homework's the only way to make sure you guys know this stuff. And his response to that, which is reasonable, college is expensive. It's not like it's cheap to be in a college classroom, you know? is to just be like, well, my parents are paying for it, so I don't really care. I just want to have fun and vibe. Oh, bro, could you imagine, man, you're paying like $50,000 a year for your kid to go to college because you think it's going to make them smarter, make them more successful, and they're sitting in a classroom that you're paying for, telling the teacher that they don't want to do the homework because they'd rather just vibe. And the professor is listening to this and looking at him like he's just the dumbest person that he's ever interacted with and says, okay, well, the homework is still assigned. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you really want to vibe and you think the professor is a buzzkill. They're probably still going to assign the homework. And it's just even more insult to injury because his parents are probably paying out the wazoo for their kid to sit there and just be like, nah, I don't want to learn this stuff. I'm just trying to vibe. I'm only here because my parents are paying for it. If you've got like a full ride scholarship and whatever, you, you decide to be like this, it's still dumb, you know? You might as well make the most of it, but at least no one that you know is paying for it. If your parents are going into debt to pay for your college and you're just like, whatever, man, that, that's just kind of like slapping your parents in the face. And I don't even think college is for everybody. Like, hey, I dropped out of college. But still, man, if your mom and dad are paying for it, you might as well take it like 2% seriously. Alright, this next one's just, like, a pure dumbness. I know that's not a word, that just really exemplifies what, what it is. So this guy was back in his hometown for a little bit, he hadn't been back for a while, and his family's throwing a barbecue, so he had decided to go and spend time with his family, which makes sense. And he gets there, and because he hasn't seen his family in a long time, obviously, like, he's talking to people, catching up, whatnot, and he's talking to his uncle, and he's trying to have a conversation with him, but his little cousin keeps, like, bugging him and asking for his phone, asking if he can play games. And because he was, like, the youngest, oldest cousin, if that makes sense, you know, like, the one that you still knew was cool, but was old enough to be the one that had his own phone, you know? He was just constantly being bugged for it. And so he decides in order to be able to have like a conversation with his uncle that he's going to give his phone to his cousin, which is a mistake. You know, I feel like just giving your phone to a kid is a bad idea because it's just going to be destroyed. Every time I've given my cousin my phone, it's come back in way worse shape than when I gave it to him. I don't even know how it's possible, dude. One time I gave my little cousin my phone and he broke it and he had it for 30 minutes. How? How, how does that even happen? Anyways, whatever, he goes off and, and plays with his phone for the rest of this party, and he doesn't really care, he wasn't paying attention to his phone anyways, but the end of his night comes and he goes to get his phone back, because you don't want to leave the party without his phone. And he finds his cousin and he's like, hey, where's my phone? And his cousin, very weirdly, is like, uh, I don't know. And he's like, what do you mean you don't know? I gave you my phone and now I want to leave, so I need my phone back, I can't leave without my phone. And his mom overhears it, like his cousin's mom, and he says, hey, give your cousin his phone back. And he says, okay, come with me, I can explain. And he immediately has that pit in his stomach, like, oh, something's wrong, you know? So he follows his cousin, and his cousin says, it's in my room. And he opens the door, and all he sees is the ceiling fan violently rocking back and forth. And so he looks at it, and it looks like there's something duct taped to the ceiling fan that's just spinning around. And his cousin says, your phone is on the fan. And he looks at his cousin, and he's like, why? Why is my phone on the fan? And his cousin's like, I'll show you. So he turns off the fan and they have to wait a minute for the fan to stop spinning and it finally comes to a stop and sure enough, it's a phone duct taped to the ceiling fan. And his cousin takes off the duct tape and the phone was put in a way that the screen was up against the fan blade. And when he pulls it off, the screen is just cracked. It looks like you put it under a car tire and then decided to drive over it. Like an impressive amount of damage done in a short amount of time. 
and he looks at his cousin and he's like, what happened? And he says, I dropped it, right? Which, whatever, I guess if you drop a phone directly on its screen, it's probably going to break. But he doesn't understand why it was duct taped to the ceiling fan. So he's like, why did you duct tape it to the ceiling fan? I, I don't get it. The screen's broken, but like, why? I, I don't understand. And his cousin goes, oh, I thought that maybe if I taped it to the ceiling fan and turned it on, it would fix the glass. And at that point, he was just so confused because it made absolutely no sense that he just picked up his broken phone and was like, uh, okay, and walked out, told his parents what happened, and his parents were super apologetic, gave him money to get the screen fixed. But he didn't even know how to process that. Like, his cousin broke the phone screen, picked it up, and went, huh, I wasn't supposed to break this. My cousin trusted me with this. I know. I'm going to tape it to the ceiling fan, and that is going to fix the damage to the screen. Which it, it didn't. I don't know if you guys know that. That's not actually an efficient way to fix the screen. I thought for sure when he said the phone was on the ceiling fan, I was like Pokemon Go trying to hatch eggs. That was the first thing I thought of, because back in like 2016 when Pokemon Go came out, me and my friends would tape our phones to the <laughs> fan to make it like count. We, we were doing steps around our house so it would hatch the eggs. It didn't even really work that well, but that was literally my first thought. I, I would have never thought that you would think that that would fix a broken screen, but whatever, apparently his cousins are connecting dots that just really are not there. All right, so this one is a very awkward situation that I'm pretty sure everyone has had before. Not literally this bad, but I think everyone's been like in a situation where you can't believe your friend talked to his parents like that. So whatever, one day he gets invited over to his friend's house to play video games. And he goes over and he's very surprised because like A, the house is huge and B, when they go in, this guy has every video game console, basically every game you can think of, all the add-ons. It's like this guy straight up has a huge museum quality collection just sitting there at, at access all the time. And so he's like, whoa, dude, this is so awesome. And he's a little bit confused because the guy's like, eh, it's kind of lame to be honest because we don't have. And he names like the only two games he doesn't have. And he's confused because he's like, oh, well, if I had a collection like this, I would be hyped. But th that was a little weird. And so whatever, they're playing video games for about an hour. And after an hour, his mom comes up and says, uh, hey, can I get you guys anything? And he says, no, thank you. But that's so nice. It's nice to meet you. I'm blah, blah, blah. And introduces himself to his mom, which is the nice thing to do, right? Like if you have never been to someone's house before and their mom walks in and is like, can I get you guys anything? You can say, no, thank you. I'm all right. Or yeah, sure. Like, but you introduce yourself, you know, that's just common practice. And his mom goes to talk back to him, not in a mean way, but like, oh, it's nice to meet you. And as she starts talking to him, his friend who's sitting next to him goes, mom, shut up and leave us alone. We're busy. And his eyes get all wide because he like can't believe he talked to his mom like that. You know, if he would have said that, then like his mom would not have been very happy. If I would have done that to my mom, then like, oh, man, I, I would have expected her to freak out. And so he looks back at the mom wide eyed, expecting her to freak out, as we all probably would. And he's insanely confused because instead of freaking out, saying his friend has to go home so they can talk about that and he can't talk to his mom like that. She just looks at her son and goes, oh, I'm sorry, honey, and leaves them alone. And he's like thinking to himself, what just happened? Like wh what just happened? This guy just told his mom to shut up and leave us alone because she was trying to talk to me after I introduced myself. And instead of freaking out and sending me home, she just rolled with it like it was a normal daily occurrence. He literally is stupefied at what he just saw. He can't believe it because like what is going on? And he's even more confused because the rest of the time he's there, he does it like three more times. Every time his mom would come in to check on him and like offer him anything, he's like, mom, go away. You're so annoying. And every time she would just be like, okay, and leave. And it started to make him so uncomfortable that he went home. Like he just did not even want to be around it because it was just like, bro, what are you doing? And he just stopped being friends with the guy after that, which I, I mean, that's just a really awkward situation. I can't even blame you, dude. Like, it's awkward enough if you go over to your friend's house and him and his parents fight. But if he's just screaming at his parents and they're just like, it's OK, honey, th that's weird, bro. This sounds like Cartman from South Park in real life. 
I, I don't know. That would make me mad uncomfortable, too. I don't blame you for not wanting to go back over to that house. It sounds like, like a Black Mirror episode, just an alternate universe where nothing works the way it's supposed to. And it wasn't just his mom. His dad got home, like, right before he left because he was just w weirded out by the situation. And his dad come in and said hi, and he was like, Dad, shut up. And his dad was just like, all right, I'll see you at dinner, and left the room. I don't know, man. Some parents do weird stuff. Like, I, I think that's obvious, but I feel like just letting your kid be like, shut up and leave me alone is not going to end well, bro. He's going to be at work one day. His boss is going to ask him something that annoys him, and he's going to be like, hey, man, you might sign my paychecks, but you're a doofus. And then he's going to be living with you until he's like 45. And on top of it, like, bro, like, <laughs> why would you want to deal with that, man? Like, I, I don't know, dude. I don't have a kid, but I feel like I would just not want to be bullied by my kid every day. All right, and this last one is just a another, like, story about someone overhearing something at college, I guess. This guy was in the library trying to study for his midterm, and it's the library, so you don't really expect to overhear a lot of conversations. And he's not even trying to eavesdrop, but you know when you're just, like, in a place and someone's speaking so loudly that you can't help but overhear it? That's what's going on, and it's the library, so it's very easy to hear what they're saying, and this guy's just, like, super loudly complaining about his parents. And whatever, everyone's parents annoy them sometimes, I think that's just, like, part of being human, but he starts just having to listen to what this guy's saying because he's speaking so loudly, and he's talking about how he can't believe his parents are only giving him X amount of money. And he doesn't hear the amount the first time to live on every month because it's just too little to live on. And he's like, dang, I wish my parents were giving me any amount of money because he was like working two jobs trying to pay for school, you know. And he keeps complaining and his friends are like, oh, how much do they give you? And the guy says, only $10,000 a month. That's like basically poverty wages. And the guy's jaw literally drops. Like, man, I wish I was getting that type of poverty wage, you know? Oh, your parents are just giving you $120,000 a year while you go to school, and you can't find a way to live on that? Hey, man, I I've got really bad news for you. If you can't find a way to pay your bills and make a good living on $10,000 a month, then y you're just got some crazy expectations about what life's supposed to be like, you know? Everybody wants to win the lottery, don't get it twisted. But if you literally can't function on $10,000 a month when all your other bills are paid for, then how are you ever going to be a functional adult, man? You know the type of people that end up like $600,000 in credit card debt? That's just this guy when his parents stop giving him $10,000 a month. But whatever, he keeps trying to study, but the guy is just loudly complaining about his parents and how little money they give him for like the next 30 minutes. And how if he just had like another $10,000, then he would actually be comfortable. So bro actually thinks that a quarter million dollars a year is just like a normal amount of money to spend to be comfortable. Trust me, if you're making more than that, good for you. But if you have to make more than that, bro, what what hobbies are you into? Like cocaine? Like what are you possibly spending a quarter of a million dollars a year on? But whatever, the guy finally gets up and leaves with his friend and then he kept studying, but the entire time he couldn't help but think that this was just the weirdest place to be. And I feel like all colleges kind of have students like this that's just like parents just have so much money it's falling out of their ears and their kids just don't realize that that's not the norm. If somehow I end up getting to the point where like $120,000 a year is nothing that I could give away, like if I'm lucky enough to get there, right? then my kid better at least know the value of it, bro. If my kid ever said something like this, I'd be like, hey, you're cut off, man. Like, you, you gotta go figure some stuff out. All right, so the person who sent this in to me was back in town for a little bit from college, so he was spending time with his family, and he decided that he was going to take his grandma out to dinner, and his grandma's a little bit older, so she has some, like, mobility issues, so she uses a walker. And obviously, people with walkers are just a, a little bit slower to get up and get going because they have mobility issues. It's not their fault. You can't really get mad at them for it. Freaking out on an old person for using a walker is just stupid because, like, what, what do you want them to do about it? Either way, they had just finished dinner and they were getting up and his grandma is taking some time to get up onto the walker and a lady is trying to leave and she walks by and, like, stops behind them because she couldn't get by. And instead of, I don't know, finding an alternate route, just being patient and nice about it, she starts, like, not even saying anything to them, but just being 
audibly annoyed. Ugh, ugh, ugh. And so the guy who sent this in to me obviously doesn't like the fact that this lady's like going in on his grandma and making her feel bad about having to take some time to get up and get in her walker. So he just says like, hey, it's all right. Like, it's not going to be much longer. Can you just please be patient? She's just getting to her walker. Can you calm down? And the lady looks at him and folds her arms like he's just doing the biggest disservice of all time, you know? He just closed the register when she got to the front and already unloaded the cart. And she says that it's inconsiderate for her to take this long to get to her walker and there's no way it actually takes her that long. Which, like, what are you talking about? There's no way it takes her that long to get to her walker? What are you, an expert on speeds of people being able to get into their, like, use of mobility equipment or whatever? Hmm, last time I checked, that's a Model 8740D. That shouldn't take more than 15 seconds for good old granny here to hop up on top of. I'm a walker salesman. I think you guys are due for an upgrade. Like, uh, what type of situation are you in where you know the amount of time that it should take someone to get onto their walker? And so the sub who sent this in can't believe that this person is actually mad at his grandma for taking time to get up at the restaurant. Which, you know, his grandma isn't a fan of either, and his grandma is not the type to take a whole lot of crap, and on top of it, now she's, like, feeling bad and she's embarrassed over something she can't control, so she decides to, like, roast the Karen. And, uh, she says that for somebody so ugly, she's very impatient, which is just a little bit of a roast, you know? I'm not really sure what it means, but it's definitely insulting. You called him ugly and impatient. And whatever, yes, that's definitely mean, but at the same time, I feel like if someone's saying that you're inconsiderate and rude for taking time to get up and get on your walker, you're kind of allowed to, like, roast them. You get, you get one roast. Maybe that's just, uh, my weird sense of the scoreboard. But I feel like Grandma deserved to roast once if this lady's gonna be like, you're an idiot for taking too long to get into your walker. And of course, the Karen doesn't like being insulted, so she just, like, looks at the old woman and goes, What did you just say to me? That was so rude of you. I can't believe that you would be so rude to say that to me. My goodness. Which, yeah, it was rude. It was a mean comment. But I feel like you kind of lose your ability to call people out for being rude if you're the one going around telling them to hurry up and get out of your way and, like, making angry sigh noises at them. You were both kind of mean, but you did start it, all things considered. Like, you can't be mad at Grandma for just deciding to say something when you're the one being like, Get out of my way, Grandma. I need to get out of this restaurant immediately. You said Grandma's inconsiderate, so now it's on. That, that's just the rules of engagement here. But Grandma isn't gonna back down and be bullied by this lady who's, like, trying to embarrass her and try to be like, You can't talk to me that way. So when the Karen asks one more time, What did you say to me? Say it again. She says, I said that you're too ugly to be this impatient. Because grandma don't care, bro. What? Are, are you going to, like, get her fired? She's already retired. There's nothing you can really do to grandma. Plus, if you're going to repeatedly ask someone to repeat themselves and not like what they say, then that's kind of on you. You knew what she said. You didn't need her to repeat it. But instead of just being irritated and talking about how it's rude and grandma shouldn't have said that, the Karen starts throwing around lawsuits and says that, like, she could sue the grandma for defamation and slander because she's not ugly. And I love the idea of this person who just read, like, half of a law dictionary and now rolls around throwing those terms around because I don't think someone just saying you're too ugly to be impatient qualifies as slander or defamation because like uh, what you're gonna go to a court of law and ask the judge to rule whether or not you're ugly like it's such an objective thing i don't really think a court's going to be able to decide and on top of it i, I think defamation you have to be able to prove damages how in the world is one old lady saying that you're too ugly to be this impatient going to cause your business to suffer You'd have to have a pretty fragile business, or, like, it, it's gotta be some very important old lady calling you out. If it's just a restaurant where you guys both get into a little insult battle, I'm not sure how you're gonna prove defamation on that one. Anyways, the subscriber and the grandma kinda laugh at the idea of her suing them for slander and defamation, because they know it's ridiculous. 
But Karen doesn't like being laughed at, so she just, like, literally stomps her feet as if she's throwing a tantrum and screams that she will sue his grandma. And there were already a lot of people looking, but when she screams that, the entire restaurant looks over and starts being like, hey, what's going on over there? Why is that guy screaming at that old lady? And the manager comes over and is like, hey, is there a problem, you know? There's a big scene being made, what's going on? And the Karen looks at this restaurant manager and starts talking about how the grandma is being rude. And the manager looks over at the grandma, and of course, she's not, like, being mean to the manager. She's not intimidating, she's not angry. And she says, I was just trying to get into my walker and this lady started insulting me. Like, it wasn't like I was just walking around trying to be rude. I just insulted her back after she insulted me. And the manager looks like he's caught between a rock and a hard place. Not because he wants to agree with the Karen, but he's like, I just don't know what to do. But the Karen starts once again stomping her feet like just a, a kid throwing a tantrum while everyone is staring and starts being like, you need to do something. You can't let her get away with this. Like, what, what do you want him to do? Ban her from the restaurant? Like, do that thing that they used to do in the old speakeasies where he literally, literally, excuse me, throws her out the front door? I don't know, man. I don't think he's going to ban this old lady from the restaurant or anything. It's not like he's gonna whip out a taser and just, bzzz, okay, grandma, get shocked. And when he kind of like says that he's not going to do anything drastic, the Karen says that she will never be eating here again and storms out. And the manager is like, all right, that's fine. It's a very busy restaurant and I've never seen you before. So it's not like I'm stressed about you never eating here again. And so the manager turns back to the grandma and starts like asking about what happened and she explains it. And the manager is like, all right, well, I'm going to give you a gift card because I'm sorry you had that experience. So the Karen basically was screaming at an old lady for taking too long to get in her walker, caused a huge scene, tried to get her kicked out. And in the end, grandma got a gift card to come back to the restaurant and she's apparently never coming back. I would love to know just how much she would have been willing to spend on that lawsuit, though. Like, that would have been such a ginormous waste of money. Could you imagine you spend, like, $300,000 on lawyers to get to the courtroom just for the judge to be like, yeah, you can't sue people for calling you ugly. Like, that's just really not how it works. Either way, crazy situation. I don't know why you'd want to just get involved in a lawsuit unless you had to, period. But on top of it, I, I just feel like going to nursing homes and trying to bait people into a fight to start a lawsuit is a weird hobby. All right, before we get into the next stories in the video, there's a gift card code on screen. I give one of these away in every video just to say thank you to you guys for being subscribed and watching. So if you're not already subscribed, turn on notifications. And if you're already subscribed with notifications, then you're just already a legend. So thanks. Let's get back to the video. All right, so this took place when this guy was at the hardware store, which is just always a place that you want to get in and get out of. Maybe some of you guys just love the hardware store, but for the most part, you go in, you grab exactly what you need, and you get out. He couldn't find what he needed, so he, like, went, got a worker to help him find something, and they're walking up and down the aisles looking for this thing, and as they're looking, very clearly being helped, there's an angry old guy that walks up, and he just looks pissed off, off rip. Before they even really interact, he's just feeling angry. It's like a Sith Lord. I can feel your hatred. I don't know if you guys remember Jeff Dunham, the guy that did, like, the puppets and stuff. Do you remember that old angry man he had? Like, kind of looking like that. And he goes, hey, worker, doesn't say like, excuse me, can I get help? Literally just like, hey, worker. And so the worker looks and says, hey, excuse me, sir, just one moment. If you could let me finish up helping this guy, I'll be right with you, which is a very nice way to do that. I feel like it's pretty obvious that like if they're with a customer, they're kind of busy right now. He's not saying F off. He's just saying, give me a minute and I will totally help you out. And he didn't even say buzz off for a minute. He was just like, I will be right with you, sir. Well, you would have thought that he had turned around and called his wife Mui Feo super ugly, just the most hideous thing he has ever seen, because his face just contorts like he just smelled the foulest fart of all time. And he goes, I need help now. Yeah, so does the guy that he's helping right now. I I'm sure there's lots of people in the store right now that need help, but if there's only X amount of workers, then they kind of got to help who they're helping, and when they're done, they'll help you. And he keeps kind of just loudly being like, I need help, to the point where he can't even really help the guy he was originally helping. So he gives a look to him and is just kind of a sympathetic look of like, can I please handle this real quick? 
And of course, the person who sent this into me isn't trying to like make this guy have a bad day, and he's getting annoyed hearing I need help over and over again. So he's like, "Yeah, go for it, no big deal." And he turns to the the old man who's still looking very grumpy, and he's like, "Well, what can I help you with?" And the old man yells in his face because they're only like eight inches apart. Your lumber prices are too high. Which, yeah, inflation's been smacking lumber. I'm sure it's a lot more costly than it used to be. I have no doubt that the, the price has dramatically gone up. The price has gone up on everything. Inflation's just beaten up all the prices. But I don't really know what you want the guy to do that's just working in the store. Like, do you think that he is somehow in charge of all the pricing that this mega corporation does? You think he's in charge of the ordering? I don't really know what you want the worker to do. He can't go and reduce prices. And he starts trying to explain to the old man that like, look, I'm really sorry. I don't really have any control over the pricing. If you're looking to do a huge project like a house or something, I do know that we do financing because all the wood and lumber for a house is like pretty expensive. So if you're going to build a house and then sell it, you know, like they have ways of, of financing it, but... When it comes to the price, like, if you want to pay in cash, the price is the price. There's really not much that he can do about it because he's not a manager. And even then, his managers can only do so much. They can't go and give you, like, a 50% discount off the corporate price. And the old man says the most confusing thing ever. He's like, well, I can afford it. It's no issue. I just don't want to have to pay that much, so just give me a deal. Which, listen, I think we're all in agreement. The guy just working in the store, the guy just working in, like, the front of the business has no control over pricing. Getting mad at them for pricing is dumb. But it's especially mad to start yelling at someone that their prices are too high and they need to bring them down and then be like, no, I can easily afford it, I just don't want to have to pay that much. Obviously, everyone wants a good deal. I'm not gonna say the guy is crazy for wanting to get the best deal, but, like, what do you expect them to do, bro? It's not a situation where you're, like, not going to have a place to live unless you get this lumber. You're very clearly just trying to get them to give you a really good deal because you don't want to pay that much. But now he's being super demanding, being like, you need to give me a deal or I'll walk out of here. And the worker is just starting to, like, get annoyed. And you can just tell because his tone of voice is shifting away from customer service to just saying this over and over again. I don't have the ability to give you the discount that you want me to give you. I don't even have the ability to give you a discount. So what you're asking me to do, I can't do. And even then, like, our prices are our prices. And when the old guy hears no, he very clearly does not like that. So he starts yelling at this poor worker that he must not know who he is. And if he knew who he was, then he would totally give him a deal. And he's making a very powerful enemy. Which is just absurd, bro. Because, like, if you are important enough where people should just know who you are, then you can also probably afford to pay the full price. You know, I, I feel like notoriety and fame usually come from something that's given you, like, some type of money. Maybe not, like, in few examples, but you guys get what I'm saying. Like, if you're a businessman in a town and everyone knows who you are, it's probably because you have enough money to afford to pay for the lumber. And on top of that, you're making a very powerful enemy. What? You're going to go out of your way as this super important person, apparently, you know, the most important guy in town to just crap all over this dude working at the hardware store. I feel like if you were actually important enough, you'd be a little too busy to be like having grudges against people just working at the store trying to do their job. And even if you're the most important person in the world, they still can't just give stuff away. Like, I, I don't know, man. Maybe in the influencer marketing world, you can get sent a bunch of free stuff, but I feel like when it comes to things, like, no one's like, Oh, man, dude, I really loved your performance in that movie. Here's a free air conditioner and $70,000 worth of lumber. I just don't feel like that happens as much. So whatever, he starts throwing a tantrum, screaming that they're going to give him a deal, or he swears he'll never shop here again, which I love is their threat all the time. It's like they don't realize that businesses in the modern era usually have more than, like, nine customers. So sure, it sucks to lose business, but if you have to pick between that business and dealing with this all the time, you'll probably just pick not to deal with this all the time. So they just start ignoring him. Like, the worker and the other guy who sent this in to me that's getting help, they're just ignoring him. And as he realizes that it's not going to work, he's not going to be able to throw a tantrum into a better price, he decides that he's going to leave, and he leaves... 
And the person who sent this in to me looks at the worker and is like, well, that sucked, you know, that was not a very good day. And the guy just sighs and is like, that's not the first time he's been down here and done something like this. That's not his first rodeo. He just spends a weird amount of time at hardware stores yelling at people to drop prices on things he doesn't need the price dropped for. Man, I hope I'm not that bored when I'm retired. Being 65 years old, you worked your whole life, you know, you and your wife wake up. What are you going to do today? You're like, I'm going to go yell at the workers at the hardware store. What are you going to do? And she's like, probably crochet. All right, this story was sent in by somebody that works, like, at a Froyo store, you know, and it's a pretty chill job, get it, Froyo chill, but it's not like they usually have a ton of crazy customers. And at this particular location, they have four sugar-free flavors. I don't know what the average is for a frozen yogurt establishment. I have no clue if there's rules and regulations on the amount of sugar-free, but I feel like four sugar-free flavors is fair. Obviously, there's not going to be as much, like, sugar-free as sugar frozen yogurt, because it's, it's ice cream, basically. But I don't know, it's not like they don't have any options for people that can't eat sugar. But one day, this woman who looks to be, like, early 30s comes in, doesn't say hi, doesn't say anything, just starts walking over and, like, intensely analyzing each of the flavors as she goes down. And the first thing she says is she looks up, does not look very happy, looks at the person working there and is like, where are the sugar-free flavors? In the way she was asking, you would have thought that she was like possessed by something that was on a mission. You know how uh, in horror movies, like when someone's bent on a mission because they're possessed and they're like, where is the results of the test? That was uh, kind of the vibe she had, except it was for sugar-free frozen yogurt. And so the worker points over and they're like, oh, they're usually over there. We have four flavors. And they go over and start looking at them and then look over and are like, you only have four flavors of sugar-free frozen yogurt. Do you have any idea how disgusting that is? And her face looks like she just did like the sour candy challenge, man. She genuinely is puckering up, looking genuinely upset at the fact that there is only four sugar-free frozen yogurt flavors. And the worker is like, yeah, that's what we have. I'm really sorry, but we don't have any other options when it comes to sugar-free. He did happen to know that some of the flavors are like low in sugar, so... They mentioned that, oh yeah, by the way, like these flavors are low in sugar. And the Karen looks and is like, do you think sugar free and low in sugar are the same thing? And it's like, no, I I don't, but you're asking for sugar free and we don't have it. So I'm just trying to provide some options here. And she walks over when he says that and she does not look very happy. And he kind of takes a step back and puts his hands up to be like, hey, like, I don't want any problem. I was just trying to tell you that we don't have any more sugar free frozen yogurt. And she like leans over the counter and puts his finger or her finger in his face and says, I know you're hiding the sugar free frozen yogurt. Give it to me. And he's like, we don't have any more. We don't have any frozen hidden flavors. Wouldn't that be weird? Like if we had a secret one in the back, why would we do that? And she kind of realizing that that is pretty dumb for them to have like a secret flavor that nobody knows about leans back, smacks the ling- the thing of cups You know how they have the stacks of cups where you can go up and grab them to start filling them up? So cups go flying everywhere and she's like, this is bullcrap. I know you need more sugar free. And when I come back here, there better be more sugar free. And she storms out. And the guy's just kind of standing there like, uh, what in the world is going on? But then she comes back in and he's like, "Uh uh-oh, she's back. This isn't good. And she starts going on this rant about how she wouldn't be back, actually, because a place like this doesn't deserve her business because she only shops at places that think more about the sugar-free community. Which I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I just feel like they have four flavors. Like, very obviously, they've thought about people that can't eat sugar. And and even then, there's certain businesses that you might just have to understand might just always have sugar. Like there's certain cake shops I'm sure that don't have sugar-free stuff. I'm not saying it's like, you know, ideal for everyone. 
But I don't know. Frozen yogurt is one of those things that if they have sugar-free flavors, that's good. But I don't feel like you can scream at them and say they have to have like 40 flavors of the stuff. Sugar-free people, the people that don't eat sugar, do exist. But it is a lower portion of the population. You know, think about it from a business perspective. If your job is to sell frozen yogurt, are you selling more sugar-free or more with sugar? And if you have four flavors of sugar-free, clearly you are caring about that community. You're not like, take a hike, but I, I don't know. I just feel like it's not in a logical situation. But whatever, apparently if you own a Froyo store, you gotta be on the lookout because people will come in and smack your cups all over the place if you don't have enough sugar-free flavors. We're not even talking about having none. Apparently there's just a certain amount you have to hit. I can't quiet now, laying low when you reach some all right, so this story time was sent in to me by somebody, and you know, this person's grown up now, but when they were younger, they were on the football team at their school. And the era this takes place in is the era, like, right before everyone had a smartphone when technology was starting to get integrated into school a little bit. That'll be important. But, you know, for the most part, everybody that was on this football team got along. I would say in most experiences I've had on, like, team sports, that's kind of how it is. Everybody gets along because you're kind of forced to. You spend a lot of time together. But there was one kid on the team whose parents had donated a bunch of money to the school in the past and did donate a bunch of money when all of his siblings went there, who was basically one of the most arrogant people you could ever meet. You know, he literally thought that he was like a young Tom Brady, the GOAT himself, and he made sure that everybody was aware of the fact that, you know, he really, really wanted to play quarterback and thought he would be great at it. The only problem with him thinking he's Tom Brady and demanding to play quarterback is that he really sucked at playing quarterback. Listen, I'm not gonna sit here and say that you shouldn't have have big dreams and work towards improving or whatever, but you gotta be a little bit realistic. You know, if you want to be a quarterback and can't throw a football, that kind of rules that out. This guy literally could not throw a spiral more than 20 yards, which, you know, is, is, is shockingly bad at throwing a football. And if you can't throw a football, that kind of rules out playing the position where you have to do that the entire game. It just doesn't really work like that. Even if you're a quarterback that's really good at scrambling and running around, you gotta be able to throw it sometimes. Anyways, even though he just does not have have the ability to be starting quarterback. He's just kind of relentlessly bugging the coach about how he should be quarterback because he has the most heart for the position and how he'd win games for sure. And listen, I understand that he's probably really passionate about playing quarterback, you know, and heart definitely matters. But if like tomorrow I just said, I got a lot of heart and tried to fight Conor McGregor, he would destroy me. He'd kill me because heart doesn't really matter in sports. It's a lot more about like talent. It matters. But if you just can't throw a football, it doesn't matter how bad you want to be quarterback. In the coach wasn't mean, he would do his best to tell him no without breaking his heart and causing conflict, which is, you know, I think what a good coach would do in this situation. Most coaches that are not great would have just started yelling at him for being annoying and trying to say that he's better than the quarterback, you know, but he would try to defuse the situation as calmly as possible, which I'll give him some credit for, you know? Well, maybe if you worked on your arm strength a bit, we could have a few plays with you alternating at quarterback, but just for right now, you don't really have the arm strength to play that position, you know, which is a really nice way of saying, like, you just can't throw the football. At least he was like, hey, it's the arm strength, just work on it, you know? He was being as honest as he could be without just telling him, like, look, the odds of you playing quarterback aren't that great simply because you have the ability to throw a football like my seven-year-old son. And every time he would, like, tell the spoiled kid this, he would reply to the coach saying that he's gonna work on it and show him next week, and every week he could, like, still throw the ball 20 yards. And it became very obvious to everyone that he was not practicing. You know, he would swear he was going to work on it for the next week. He promised everybody he was spending hours in his backyard throwing the football. But there was just no way he was, because week after week, he couldn't throw it any further. He didn't get any better at throwing a spiral. If anything, it got worse. And I just refuse to believe that if you're actually, like, practicing throwing a football for hours a day, for weeks, that you, like, couldn't get better at it, I just refuse to believe that. The idea that this dude was really in his backyard yard practicing for hours and hours and just literally could not get better at throwing a football. I just feel like it's one of those things that you would have to get better at if you repeated it enough, unless you're purposely practicing as bad as humanly possible. Like, I don't know. I just don't think there's many things you could practice for weeks and not get better at. But for some reason, the football gods had frowned upon this man and, you know, obviously made him have zero improvement after doing this for weeks. And the coach was starting to get annoyed because each week he was wasting time being like, all right, look at 
at how far I can throw, you know, he would stop practice and make everybody watch it. And it just wasn't getting better. The coach had no problem having challenges, you know, and people trying to improve and whatnot, but you had to show improvement. If you're just wasting time and not practicing, it's not going to do anything. So after week five of him trying to challenge the starting quarterback and being unable to just throw the football, the coach finally made an announcement after practice saying that since the season was now half over, that they were just going to do like no more position challenges, you know, just because, oh, the last half of the season, we want to keep the starting team consistent, you know, which is fair enough. I feel like if you let people challenge everyone for the first couple weeks of the season, that's fair. But by the time, you know, you're getting into the home stretch of the season, you probably should just have one team that plays. But obviously, the spoiled kid does not like the sound of not being able to challenge everyone to be quarterback every week. He literally stands up while the coach is talking and is like, that's not fair. And the coach tells him, well, you know, it's not just for quarterbacks, it's for all positions. And, you know, please sit down and let me finish. And the kid just interrupts the coach again. And he's trying to be a nice guy and diffuse it as calmly as possible. But the spoiled kid just starts yelling, no, you need to let me play quarterback already. I've been working so hard week in and week out and you just refuse to let me play. And he's like, look, dude, I understand you've been working week in and week out, but it's not improving. And the coach at this point had been very patient. It's literally the first time that like he said anything back, but the spoiled kid keeps yelling at him and now he's getting yelled at in front of his team and he doesn't want to take it. So he snaps a little bit and just goes, you know, this would be a different discussion if you could throw throw the ball, all right? If you could throw the ball, we could talk about it, but you can't. So just sit down and shut up and let me finish what I was saying. And obviously the spoiled kid's just kind of standing there for a moment, stupefied someone yelled at him and some other people on the team cheer a little bit like, yo, go coach. And the coach does shut that down. He goes, hey guys, stop that. But the message is clear that the team kind of agrees with what he just yelled. And this dude is being really annoying about challenging the quarterback every week, even though he can't throw. And you know, usually when people are in this situation where they just got embarrassed in front of a bunch of people and are realizing that they might be a little bit annoying, there's two things that they do. They either like, you know, leave the situation situation and realize that they suck or they double down and he doubles down and one thing that I'd recommend if you are gonna double down is that like you know you don't mention who your parents are like my parents weren't school donators or anything but I just feel like there's never a good reason to bring up who your parents are if you want a position or a job or are trying to make a point because you're just not your parents even if your dad's the president dude it doesn't mean that you just like get to play quarterback if you can't throw the football but I guess he never got the memo you know because he instantly just starts going off about how how his parents are huge boosters to the school and the coach had a financial obligation to put him in quarterback because of how much money his parents had given as if that means anything like your parents give us money so we just magically have to give you starting quarterback job and basically the kid starts to threaten the coach saying that you know if he doesn't put him in at quarterback then the team would be cut off and that wouldn't be a very smart decision especially because he knows that the coach wanted a smart board which you know goes to show how old this is but he basically threatened to like not give him money for what the coaches says he's wanted and obviously this guy isn't his parents you know but to hold a donation or like something you promised over someone's head unless they do what you want is pretty messed up you know and obviously that uh, ultimatum was not gonna make the coach pleased because you're basically saying like look dude I kind of own you and unless you do what I want I'm just not gonna give you any more money from my parents and at that point it's like okay well if you're not gonna even donate to the team then don't be on the team and the coach does give him the chance to corrected he asked him to clarify and he's like are you threatening the financial future of your football team because you're not getting what you wanted trying to point out the irony of him like being on a team you know but then also selfishly holding all this money that his parents donated over the team's head because yeah that's not a very team player move right there you know to be like hey by the way if you don't do what I want which is definitely not the best for the team then I just won't give you anything and the spoiled kids response is like no I'm simply stating the facts of what's gonna happen unless you put me in at quarterback so you do what you want with that information you know it's not a threat it's a promise if my parents don't feel like I'm getting the chance to play on this team why would they donate to it so yeah it's not a threat it's a promise either put me in at quarterback or that's what's going down and honestly at that point the coach probably should have kicked him off the team because that's just absurd bro you can't be having your entire operation be held hostage by some rich kid that's like my mom and dad donate but instead the coach does like the ultimate 500 IQ big brain play to make this dude wish that he had never said that but also, you know, give him exactly what he's asking for. So he looks at him and he goes, okay, you really want to play quarterback? And he's like, yeah. And he says, all right, well, then the game that takes place in two days, you're the starting quarterback for. You get exactly what you want. And everybody is kind of like, <gasps> 
Because the team that they were playing in two days wasn't just some, like, crappy team that would be fun to play against. They were playing the best team in their area by a large margin. In high school football, not all teams are created equal, all right? There's some teams that are just, like, insanely good and better than everybody else around, and that was the team that they were going to be playing. Just happened to be that, like, everyone on the other team was twice the size of them, twice as fast, twice as strong, you know? They were, like, nationally ranked, had won state championships, and this school was just a normal school. So even with their normal course, quarterback they were going to get slaughtered but if they played this dude with no experience who couldn't throw the ball he would get destroyed and like they were gonna lose anyways and the spoiled kid starts to protest a bit saying he doesn't think it's the best idea for his first game at quarterback to be against that team because they're so good and you know they're kind of known for destroying teams like them 70 to nothing and he just literally goes on this rant listing all the reasons that he only wanted to play quarterback if it was against a team that sucked which once again just like isn't really how it works obviously everybody wants to beat Tom Brady winning seven Super Bowls, but there's a lot of quarterbacks that are stuck on Garbo teams and lose a lot, you know? And the coach says, well, you're the one who wanted to challenge the quarterback for his spot, so here's the challenge. If you somehow don't get destroyed this Friday, then the spot is yours. And so, obviously, the spoiled kid is put into a pickle here because he doesn't want to play quarterback in a two days, but at the same time, like, he can't back down because, obviously, the coach is giving him his opportunity, and it's very evident that, like, this is his last chance to try. If he doesn't try now, then the coach can always just be like, look, I gave you the chance and you didn't want to. So he accepts the offer. And obviously, if the game's in two days, it means that they only had one more practice before the game to get him used to playing quarterback. And that's just not enough time to learn how to run a football offense, even if you have a bunch of experience, you know? Like, imagine just joining a brand new team for a sport you play and learning everything in a day. That would be hard. Now, imagine you also have no experience at the position. Yeah, there's literally no chance that in one day you can learn enough to do good, especially against a good team. And during that practice, it just becomes insanely evident that this is going to go poorly. He just can't throw the ball, you know? He's having a hard time doing handoffs to the running back. He keeps forgetting the counts to snap the ball. He's just doing horrible. And like I said, you would think if he had literally spent hours and hours in the backyard practicing that, like, most of this stuff would have become relatively easy to him at some point. But it's just going horribly. And a lot of the players are looking to the coach to do something Thing, but he just holds strong and is like, you're playing quarterback. In fact, the practice itself had gone so poorly that like after practice in the huddle, the spoiled kid himself started to admit that it probably wasn't the best idea for him to start. But the coach cut him off when he's in the middle of like, I don't know if this is the best idea. And he said, well, this is what you wanted, right? And he's like, yeah. And he says, all right, well, this is your chance. Otherwise, you're never getting a chance to play quarterback again. And just the way that coach said it wasn't trying to be mean. It was just a very matter of fact statement of like, you've been bugging me about this for months stop complaining about it now. And the spoiled kid was way too prideful to be smart and admit that like, look, this is gonna go poorly, I'd rather just not. So he's like, fine, I'll do it, and I'm going to win, like you guys are all gonna see. And the entire team is literally rolling their eyes and groaning because they had just seen the same practice. And it's very evident that like, you know, they already were going to get slaughtered, but uh, this is going to be a next level embarrassment simply because this guy just does not know what he's doing but keeps insisting that he's the greatest of all time. So the next day is game day, and the spoiled kid is in his jersey going around the school telling everyone that, like, oh, I'm the starting quarterback, and it's gonna be awesome. You know, I stole the job from this guy because he just wasn't cutting it anymore, and you guys should all come watch, because it wasn't at their school, it was at the other school. And, you know, everybody who's on the football team is, like, hearing him brag to everyone and say that they should come watch the game, and they're confused because they're not sure why you would want people to come watch you lose. Even in a world where the spoiled kid was somehow, like, Aaron Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Joe Montana mixed into one, right? If the rest of your team just sucks and isn't fast or strong and the other team is just better than them, you're still going to have yourself a bad time because, like, you're just going to get sacked every play. You're never going to be able to have anyone catch the ball because someone twice their size is going to take them from them. You know, it's just not going to be a good situation even if you're great. But you're not great and the other team is just better. Everybody else on the football team knew that this game they were going to lose, like, even if they're regular quarterback quarterback was playing, so they just didn't understand why the spoiled kid was insisting on roaming around the halls, begging everyone to come watch, because it wasn't going to be something that he wanted
wanted people to see. You know, they knew that, but for some reason in his mind, he's like, no, I'm going to have a Disney Channel miracle here and somehow become the greatest quarterback of all time. And uh, they just didn't really say anything to him because they were like, all right, dude, you made this bed. You're going to lie in it. Anyways, the game finally comes and the spoiled kid is like listening to music before to get all hyped up. And the rest of the team is dreading this because they know that they're going to get slaughtered. And the spoiled kid's just off in his own world being like, all right, all right, I'm going to do this, you know, eight touchdowns by halftime. Just really unrealistic stuff. You know, like, listen, I'm all for believing in yourself, but there comes a point where, like, if you've never played a sport before and then all of a sudden you're saying you're going to break records by halftime, that might be a little bit too optimistic, but uh, the kickoff happens and it goes relatively well, I guess. So now it's the first play with the spoiled kid in at quarterback, and it's a pass where he's supposed to throw it, like, five yards, which should be easy enough. Like, that's a relatively easy throw. Anyways, the ball gets snapped and he throws it. The only problem is he literally throws it like as slow as humanly possible. People to this day are still confused on how he managed to bend time itself to make the ball float through the air for as long as it did, you know? Like he just, I don't know how he managed to do it. It was as if the Matrix universe itself suddenly merged with ours just so this football that was thrown could slow down and have the velocity of like a balloon filled with helium just flying through the sky. And obviously it's up in the air for so long that the other team that's a lot bigger, faster, and stronger than them just kind of like pushes past them, runs, and just snatches it out of the air. So that's called an interception. And on top of that, he turns and just runs it back down the field and literally scores off the first play of the game. So uh, not too great. It's his first pass in his career is uh, taken by the other team for a touchdown, which I'm going to assume is not how you want your career to start. Obviously, like these things happen, you don't have much control over it. But uh, as far as you want the mythology, and lore of your career to go. Having an interception taken back for a touchdown is probably not play one. But when he gets to the sideline, instead of having his head held down and being a little embarrassed, he decides to start yelling at the coach because apparently it was the bad play's fault that he had taken forever to throw a slow ball. The coach is not having it and instantly just snaps back at him. He's like, listen, a five-yard pass is not supposed to take 25 seconds to get to the receiver, okay? I could have gone to Subway and gotten a sandwich in the amount of time it took for you to throw the pass. Obviously, the ball has to get to the receiver in a timely manner. You don't have the ability to throw deep, so the only way this is going to work is if you get it out quick. You know, so you just have to throw the ball fast, and the ball has to get there in time. That's why it was a problem. Either way, because the other team scored, they got the ball back pretty quick right off the kickoff, and they go out there again, and this time they're in the huddle, and he's calling a play, and out of nowhere, he just insults, like, all the linemen that are responsible for protecting him from the defenders, For the, by the way. He's like, oh, you guys are sloppy pigs that can barely do your job and it's your fault that I threw that interception so next time just be more careful and listen there's just no reason to talk to your linemen that way if you're a quarterback because like I said they're in charge of protecting you a general rule of thumb I would say is be nice to the people that are in charge of protecting you because you know they're already doing their best against people that are better than them but on top of it I just feel like insulting and demoralizing the people responsible for holding the athletes back that job is literally to destroy you is just like the best way to go about it. Just be nice to him. You know, just be nice. You don't need to insult them because it's going to end up with you getting destroyed. Now, of course, no confirmation about if what happened next was on purpose, but there was this huge guy on the other team's right side. And somehow, by magic, when the ball is snapped, the guy that's responsible for guarding him manages to fall right at the start. Wink, wink, total accident. And when he falls, it opens up this lane for the guy that, you know, is giant and fast to just go straight at the quarterback. And the entire goal of the defense is to like sack the quarterback behind where they are so that way they lose yards right push them back down the other side so he starts to run at him and I think this would have been really messed up of the guy to do if it would have been on the left side because he wouldn't have been able to see it coming but when the guard falls the spoiled kid sees him fall and now is very aware that this dude is rushing down this alley towards him and so he starts to scramble running away as fast as possible because he realizes there's literally nothing standing between this giant dude who is now trying to run him down and tackle him because that's his job. So he's running, but the problem is he starts running backwards. Generally, when you scramble, you want to go like sideways, maybe a little bit back, but he starts running towards his end zone trying to get away, like literally sprinting away from the guy on the other team because he's so afraid of him, which is just not what you're supposed to do. And he's not very fast, so this guy's gaining on him and it gets to the point where he's like about to tackle him. And right before he gets tackled, he turns around and says, don't hit me, and literally hands the guy the ball in exchange for not getting tackled. So 
like, obviously, there's this spot where he stops and is looking at this kid trying to give him the ball. And the player on the other team is insanely confused because it's not every day that a quarterback, like, tries to give you the ball in exchange for not getting hit. Usually, they'll throw it away or take the hit or, you know, not opens negotiations. But here, this guy is like, if I give you the ball, will you not hit me? And he's like, uh, sure, I guess. So he takes the ball out of the spoiled kid's hand and proceeds to run down the field and score pretty quick because keep in mind, the spoiled kid had been running towards his end zone the entire time he's getting chased. Anyways, he had literally just given a touchdown to the other team, and so the spoiled kid walks to the sideline, and everyone on his team starts yelling at him, like, what is wrong with you? What are you doing? Why would you give the ball to them and let them score? Like, you do realize that you just gave them a touchdown. And he's like, I'm done. I've had enough. I don't want to play this game anymore. I thought being quarterback was going to be fun, and he starts taking off his pads. And as he's taking off his pads, the coach looks at him, and he's like, what are you doing? Are you quitting? Like, are you serious right now? And the spoiled kid like, yes, I'm quitting. Are you kidding me? You expect me to get hit out there? You're supposed to protect the quarterback. And the fact that, you know, I got hit just goes to show that you guys don't know what you're doing. And listen, man, like, of course you're supposed to protect the quarterback, but chances are you're going to get hit. And the coach literally tells him, like, it's football. I don't know what you expected to not get touched. And he takes his pads off and just storms out of there pissed. And so, obviously, he's quit. He's done. The team is still a little bit confused, though, because, you know, they they just didn't understand why he was quitting over getting hit. Like, the team's always gonna do their best to protect you. It's the lineman's job to protect you. If you're insulting them, though, obviously he fell, wink wink. But, you know, even if he didn't fall, eventually at some point during the hour game, someone's gonna make a mistake and you're probably going to get hit. Like, football is just a sport that happens to have a lot of contact. There's not much that's gonna change about that, because the entire nature of the game is, like, tackling people and, and hitting the quarterback, you know? I feel like football is just a horrible sport to play if you're afraid of physical contact at all. It's literally one of the main things it's known for is being rough and like hitting, dropping shoulder pads, ah, concussion. <sighs> like, you know, that's not all it is. I, I'm, a, I'm a football fan, but like, let's be honest, if you're afraid of getting hit, you probably shouldn't be playing football because it's just going to happen. Either way, though, he had quit because apparently he just thought there were rules in place to make it illegal to touch the quarterback and uh, I guess the spoiled quit had just quit the team. They ended up putting the starting quarterback back in and, uh, you know, as much as I would love for there to say that there's like some Disney magic comeback here, it wasn't happening. They still got slaughtered. They did manage to score once, but like I said, the team they were playing was just so much better than them that like it didn't really matter who was going to be at quarterback. They were just going to lose, which is why it's even funnier that like the spoiled kid took it so personally, you know? It was just reality that it was not going to go well. Even the person way better than him didn't do any better. After the game, though, the spoiled kid had left, but I, the spoiled kid's parents start walking up to the coach to talk to him, and all the players are kind of nervous because they're expecting him to get yelled at and reamed out for not letting him finish the game as quarterback. But they're actually super understanding and they start telling the coach, you know, thanks for giving our son a chance, but it's pretty obvious that he's not too cut out for this. I mean, you know, it's not every day you watch someone give away a touchdown. And they laugh a little bit and they're like, well, you know, thank you for giving him a chance because he's wanting to play quarterback forever. They had been at the game to watch their kid play and obviously when their kid had cried and handed the other team the ball, they realized that the crap he had said about, you know, the coach being out to get him and not getting a fair shot shot wasn't really true. He just wasn't cut out for playing quarterback and the coach was just telling him he wasn't cut out to play quarterback. So they said that they would continue to support the team, you know, and it wasn't really a big deal about their son not playing quarterback and they just wanted to come clarify because they didn't want him to think it's personal that they're not going to be at games now that their kid's not playing. So his entire plan of like holding the money for the smart board above the head didn't really work because they just kind of realized football is not for you, kid, which is probably the best move if you're going to quit when you get tackled. Either Either way, uh, the coach did get his smart board GG. The kid left and, uh, you know, he, he did get a chance at playing quarterback. So technically, everybody still got what they wanted. I am going to give the parents credit, though, for like still supporting the team. I don't know if I would be giving money to a team that my kid didn't play on. Not in a mean way. It's just like, if my kid's not here, why do I care? Regardless, around the school, people would just kind of make fun of him being like, dude, what was that? And he would take it relatively well. He wasn't the fighting type, but I think everyone was more just confused because he didn't have to 
to do that. Like, he didn't have to go around to everybody and ask a bunch of people to go to the game so they see that all go down. He didn't have to demand to be starting quarterback if he didn't know what he was doing. Like, he could have just been on the team and there's no issues, you know? He had been the third string quarterback before that, so he didn't get a lot of practice. But, like, you know, you just could have been the backup quarterback. That's a pretty cool gig. But, no, you had to go ahead and make it a fool out of yourself and then just get slaughtered anyways. Was not very worth it, dude. All in all, though, I would say that uh, I thought the story would be entertaining. If you've ever, like, played sports and had an experience like this, let me know what your coach would do if you yelled at him like that. But other than that, I think that's going to do it for the video, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy, I'd appreciate you taking a second to press the like button. Let me know in the comments section down below what you thought. And, of course, subscribe if you're new and turn on notifications. If you really want to help me out, I'm going to go ahead and put a link to the intro song down below, along with a link to my podcast, The Scuffed Cast, or, of course, you could use code SCRUBBY at the G Fuel checkout. It's a great way to get a discount on G Fuel. Helps me out. I'd appreciate you. And last but certainly not least, I do go ahead and put some of my content up on Spotify. So if you want to check it out without gameplay or offline, I'll put that link in the top of the description. Feel free to go check it out. And we also have the coolest merch to ever exist, which can be yours by visiting the link in the bottom of the description. So you should definitely go ahead and do that. It's pretty fantastic if you ask me. But on that note, that'll officially do it, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. And hopefully I will see each and every single one of you guys next time with another video. I'm out. Peace.